Does YouTube not actually tell you the length of the video anymore before you click on it? Oh my word. What an awful update. Hello, how's it going? It's going okay, thank you. I've got some toast here. I've just noticed that the YouTube that it's forced me to use doesn't let me see... Dark mode, please. It doesn't let me see how long is left in the video, so I can't choose like three hour long playlists without clicking on them and hoping that they're long. Is that, is that a plugin for that? YouTube. YouTube. Is that actually a thing? I mean, I googled that and it came up with a RuneScape thing. Yeah, no, I'm not going to go on that website. Okay. Jesus Christ, YouTube. Why- how did you make a website that was once so functional become so functionless? I don't get it. You like the new schedule, by the way, it seems healthier. Thanks, Potatoes. Yeah, it does seem. It should be a lot easier. And it gives me more time to do stuff in my day that I previously had not had time for. Uh, short of taking an entire day off again. I think it gives me time to do stuff that isn't on a Tuesday. Um, give me a second, I'm sending out the announcements. Dog computer. This is how I find the GIFs that I use in my tweets. I take the one with the lowest frame rate as well. There we go. We need to do one of these streams with Kotlin at some point because I need to learn that. Here's another link. Oh, so there is an alternate front. Invidious. Free software, no ads. I need to make a Google account to save subscriptions. Lightweight. Dark mode and bed support. All right, let's have a look. Oh. Actually, no way. I don't recognize any of these channels. Okay. If I log in, does it let me log in via Google or is it? Oh, I can log in via Google. Oh, I'm absolutely not giving them my email and password. Fuck off. I can put Cafe de Toho on here then, maybe. No? Cafe de Toho. Oh, that's much better. I can actually see the screen that I'm looking at. Okay, let's put on some girl's apartment then. Right, let's try using this for a bit. You don't need to log in. Well, I was wanted to log in just so I could get my history and stuff. Oh, it just uses the regular um, HTML5 video player, does it? Alright, I like this site. That's way more sensible. And there's a little settings cog. Autoplay, play next by default, no. Listen by default, default speed. Preferred video. Oh, I can change the volume to be quiet by default. Okay, I like that. Save. I'm imagining if this isn't actually nearly as good as YouTube because I can't imagine that they save your place in videos, but just for listening to music for now, it's probably okay. It looks like there's no way to disable the disable the description though, so if I want to see the next video, I have to scroll all the way down. Okay. I'm going to leave it up just because it's, it's different. Actually, it renders horribly in my browser. I can't see the whole video player. Unless I'm in full screen. Yeah, sorry man, that site's ass. I'm gonna go back to YouTube. I guess that's what happens every time. Someone's like, hey, I made this other version of YouTube. Like, sorry, I cannot use it. Weird. I don't know, I can't... I'm not gonna use a website to play videos where I can't see the video controls unless I'm in full screen. I'll just put up with this. Ouch. Sorry, I just punched my microphone. Hello everyone, though. Hello Waste, Potatoes was taken, Timo. Uh, potatoes again, by Karami. Strappy Bean, Moon, Inferiority, Layawin. Hey, weird, sorry. I haven't had my coffee yet. Sorry I'm like 15 minutes late as well. 
I had a nosebleed. And as far as I know, that's not high quality content for the stream. Is the volume okay? Can you hear me in the and the video game A okay? The video game. Me and the um me and the music okay. Hi Beaver. Volume's good? Oh right, cool. I also got myself two slices of slightly stale toast here, which I'm gonna be trying to eat for breakfast. Hmm. Stale but delicious. Man, we did a ton of progress last time, didn't we? You can hear the video game wonderfully. Hell yeah. Man, this is awesome. I forgot how much progress we made. Holy shit. It actually feels very impressive. It's kind of like an ant. Yeah, I noticed that. Alright, so yeah, I remember. We were trying to do some stuff with uh, interpolation for those paths, weren't we? We had cosine and we wanted to look into cubic. And we had this paper that someone linked. Try adding inertia to the player to make it look smoother. I know what you mean, but I'm gonna not do that. Because I like games that are do I like games with like ex like perfect movement. You know what I mean? Like when you let go of the key, it let goes let's go of the key. I really hate like acceleration. Oh god. Like I think Meat Boy gets away with it. Cause you don't ever really need to do back and forth fine movement. I just got a ton of toast dust down the back of my mouth. Oh man, that was horrible. That's a horrible feeling. Hello, William. <coughs> toast? How do you have so much dust in you? Yeah, don't breathe this. I think I was trying to talk while eating toast. Hello, Frostbite Fox. That's a good name. But the hell with inertia would be strange. Yeah, you want like you want like exact snappy movement. Anyway. We've got linear, we've got cosine. Sorry, hang on then. If I were to use this linear... If I were to use this linear interpolation as well, you reckon it would be like snappy between locations? Alright, let's try this. Someone's probably asked this, but you thought about streaming some cooking. Yeah, that's the subscriber goal. Yeah, we're at 140. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was the subscriber goal for 150 Twitch subscribers. I think it should be there if you scroll below the screen. There should be like a little doodle. Hmm. Sorry if I don't talk much at the start. It's going to take me like a few minutes to get coffee into my system and to finish eating this toast. So it's just going to be the music and me eating toast for a little bit. They changed the Twitch interface. Did they? I'm still seeing the same broken dashboard. You get a craving for toast inside you. It's 3.20am and you need to sleep but now you want toast. You can have some of mine if you like. It has some honey on it as well. I don't know if you like that but here's some toast. Yeah, I'm a weird donut. It's identical, but this one is more brainless to in, uh, to put in. As in, um, if I want to try and put it into these two vectors and stuff, I'd have to spend like another two seconds creating a vector 2F and changing it. 
Um, whereas if I just want to quickly experiment with the different path types, I can just drop these in. You know? I can just replace the method calls with these. Do I already have a float version? Is that identical then? Is it mathematically the same? Because the return value is different. This one has a moo in it. CL interp 5. Yes, they're mathematically the same. Okay then. I guess we'll just keep it with lerp. Sure then. I didn't realize they were the same. But this should be okay, right? We can try out cubic. And we can try and uh, do it between... I'm assuming now is meant to be between these two, actually. I should probably read the paper a bit more. But I'm assuming now is like 1.5. Last is y. Next is y2. The next after next is y3. And the one before previous is y0. Cubic interpolation is the simplest method that offers true continuity between segments. It requires more than two endpoints, and also the two points on either side of them. So yeah. How to interpolate between the first and last? In the examples here I haven't bothered. A, com a, a common solution is to dream up two extra points at the start and end of the sequence. These new points are created so they have a slope equal to the slope at the start end of the segment. That makes sense. Her, her might? Her might interpolation is like cubic, requires four. It has nice tension and biasing controls to tighten the curvature. Okay. Ooh, Kana music. I forgot there was a girl's apartment too. It's a shame YouTube doesn't let you see the date of upload anymore. You're doing interpolation. Yeah. That's the plan. Let's try lerping, so if you want to have a look again, chat. Hello, Vortex. This is what cosine interpolation looks like. I might actually change those points to be a bit more sensible. Um... Let's have it start at 32 by 32, go down to 132 by 132, go to 132 by 164, 164 to 132, back to 132, 132, back to 32, 32. That should be a bit easier to look at. Why does interpolation need a graph? What do you mean? Also, hello, Mimi. Do you have a coding degree? Yeah, I have a degree in computer science. On the site? I don't know, it's just an easier way to understand. Alright, so there's cosine. Let's actually make them a lot faster than that. They don't need a lifetime, that. Hang on, where do I do the lifetime? In game, don't I? Yeah, okay, let's make the lifetime like a third of that. Alright, here we go. What the hell is happening to YouTube? I don't know, they're like stripping it of all features. Which is really annoying, because if you use it to listen to music, it now auto-pauses randomly, and doesn't let you see the length of songs before you click on them. Anyway, this is Cosine. This is what we're currently using. So let's try it and see what Linear looks like. Uh, where were we doing that? Enemy controller, you reckon? Cosine interpolates. Let's instead send in... Look. That might just work, right? Going to do any other work. Looks sort of the same to me, I'll be perfectly honest. I don't know why it waits at each point, I'll be honest. Tier 2 interpolation is how hot you make a smooth line between two points instead of jagged edges so the whole thing is originating and making graphs. Doesn't want to sleep right now. Don't want to math right now. Good night, Moo. Adios, brother. You missed so much on the last stream you caught. Since the last stream you caught. When were you last here, Potatoes?
Look, here's Microsoft Paint. M -m -m -m. Say we have three points, right? We have point one, we have point two, we have point three. We have an enemy in this video game who is a red circle. How do we get this enemy to move between the three points? That was the whole like last stream as I was trying to figure out how we want to do this. One way is like just linearly just going one, two, three. Are you what you you getting this? Like one, two, three? That's one way. And then if we do different forms of interpolation, we can try and like smooth it out so it does like a sort of circle. Rather than just bap, 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 bap. You can try and interpolate it to be a circle. That's the idea of what we're trying to do. We want to make it so... If we wanted an enemy to move in a circle, we could theoretically just do this. And then just have it, like, move between these four points. Whereas without a nice interpolation algorithm, it would just be making, like, a sort of diamond shape. Is the game going to have MS Paint art when it's finished? Of course. Bap. So if we just were to use linear interpolation, it would move in like a diamond shape between four points. And then with what we're trying to do with like cubic and stuff, we might want to try and make it look more like a circle. That's the idea at least. It's just how we're dealing with the coordinates on the screen. Yeah, I know, but don't know. I just want to smooth it down a little bit. 2D interpolation with vectors. That's the basic idea, as far as I can tell there. Look, here's a... There's, if you Google it, there's like a maths work page about it. Yeah, that'll be using that. W I guess that would be treating x and y as a as a vector instead of in instead of individually doing x and individually doing y. I know, don't it? But now this should be okay, though, right? I don't want to spend too long figuring out the movement pattern if it's something we can easily fix later, because it's just what we drop in here, right? This is the update function. We're updating it here. You know. Anyway. We want to try doing this. You're off now. Have fun at school, man. Hey, Chris. Ooh, nice hair. Like the things that you use to, like, pull the curtains. Good work, Chris. Thank you. Anyway, we're gonna try and do some co uh, cubic. The middle two are easy. Like, Y1 and Y2 are the same. It's how we're gonna deal with the, the end and the last. Because theoretically, we can do this. But then it breaks if we're at the end of the index, and there's not another one. So if you do next index plus one, you'd think maybe that would work. But if you're off the end of the vector, this will just crash, because there's not an actual element there. Ooh. Owen, hello. Thank you for the 17 months resubscription. Hello, 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 hello. Aha. Uh, anywho. I guess I could do next index minus two. Like I could do this minus minus two, theoretically, right? So this would, in an ideal world, magically work. Honestly, we might want to turn this into its own variable. What is this? Space invader movement dot index. It's kind of a long. 
Yeah, linear, does it not stop? Perhaps it, it does still stop. Ah, oh, thank you, potatoes. Thank you. It does still stop at each point, which seems kind of odd. I guess it still slows down towards the end somehow. If something stops, maybe something's wrong with your move calculation. Do you reckon? Hello. This is how I want to think about it right now. The middle ones are sorted, because those are the same as every other calculation. Like, y1 and y2 are the same as just x and y. Like, this position and x position. It's how we're going to sort out the last one and the next next one. Because what we could do is make it up. We could say, like, we could do a stupid if statement and just say if we're not at the end yet, do this. Otherwise, just interpolate to the last point twice. And at the start, interpolate to actually that might be an easy thing to try. Try pinching move every time to get a closer look. Okay. I'm gonna try doing that because while it's extremely dumb, it might solve the problem very easily. Alright, let's try that. Stupid if statements sound fun, especially now Donut can't be here to tell me how bad they are. No, you can't just use an if statement every update cycle. No. No, he probably probably wouldn't mind, would he? Um, so look, what we could do is if next index. Actually, hang on, I can do this in a much simpler way. If next index. Where is next index? How do I calculate next index? It's the overall position plus one. If next index minus one, so this is the current index. If the current index is equal to zero, uh, float y zero equals bap. Oh, I like this. Uh, else, that. Right? It might solve it, right? If next index plus one larger than equal to space invader movement dot size. So if we're about to go off the end, float y3 equals next index. Something like that. Obviously we've got to do it for both, but ignore that for a second. Yeah, no, no, don't don't worry, I'm gonna move around where I'm declaring stuff. I'm just think thinking for a second. Where are we out on the game? Hey Fortberg. We're on enemy pathing. Wait, hang on, can you do this in C? You can, right? How are you doing? Y0, X0, Y0, X0, y, Y3, X3, Y3, X3. Anyone who's going better than having wasted time like you have? 
Hey, Kilo, what's wrong? How's your morning gone? We have strawberries. Okay. Ooh, floor fruit. Hell yeah, brother. I'll have some floor fruit. Sure thing, brother. Tasty floor fruit. Mmm, coronavirus. Mmm. Mmm, dust. Okay. Chris is feeding me uh, floor raspberries, chat. Design assessment. You're doing a design write-up for a system to stop a pot boiling over. Bye, Chris. What's wrong with it? Mmm, tasty dust. Okay, so look. If we're at... If we're, if we're at zero... Set them here. Otherwise, set them to the last one. If we're about to go overboard next time, set it to here. Hang on. We should definitely be doing this with 2D vectors, that's correct. 500 words on put a wooden spoon over in you. What? We're very inflexible and demanding format. That does sound painful. Y X Y X Y X Y X Y X Y X Y X Y X. This doesn't look horribly insensible, does it? X zero. Y zero. X three. Y three. That doesn't look like the stupidest thing we've done. Just one of them, maybe. Oh, I need to add this to the header, don't I? Maybe logic gets easier when you have a variable for current index, not only next. Well, it was that way because originally we only did need a next index. It's only now that we need a current index. Donut here. Donut's doing his own thing. Hey, it's doing something. I have no idea what it's doing, but that's really cool. I have absolutely no idea what it's doing. It's kind of scary looking. I don't know if you know what I mean. But it's like sort of horribly, horribly natural yet unnatural. I kind of like it. I don't know what we'd use it for. You know what I mean? Like it looks too smoothed out to be machine made. Yet it looks way too robotic to be human. It's like alien movement, yeah. Well, it eats with purpose because when it's at the start and where it's at the end, it's basically not doing any interpolating different to linear. It's not because this is in a weird spot, is it? Let's try moving this to the top and seeing if that changes anything. I can't imagine it will, but maybe it will. It's Uncanny Valley, yeah.
I can make it a straight line, yeah. Hang on. We'll make it move from 150. Wait, hang on. X, Y. 150 to... One fifty, one fifty, to three hundred, one fifty, to three hundred, three hundred, to one fifty, three hundred. And we'll do that over this course of like five seconds. Hey, Dusty. What's wrong? Oh, is it because I'm trying to print Moo? FMT prints really weird. I mean, what is Moo again? A float. Do I have to do like... Is there like string dot value of? How do I print a, print a float in uh, C++? Can you really not just print it? Oh yeah, hey hey. FMT print a float in C++. Are you getting your book, Chris? Hello. Can I do that? Do I have to launch it via terminal? You can leave out the zero, you think. Oh, can you? Wait, hang on. What, what order is this in? Bin, build, release. Bin, release, build. No, that's not it. What's the file path? No, hang on. Build, bin, release. Build, bin, release. Woolen.exe. There we go. Wait, hang on. Oh yeah, it's moving in a really weird way. That's not quite right. Yeah, I'll be honest, that looks very incorrect, doesn't it? The Moo is definitely being calculated in a weird way. Let's just move it move between two points, right? That should be simple for it. Move between 150, 150 and 300, 150. Gotta get this slash n in there. I don't want to spam up the console too much yet. Oh, I'm currently running the game. I think it always starts from zero zero. I forgot that was an issue it was having. Hmm. What's going on? We're making a Toho clan. We're currently trying to sort out the enemy movement. I guess it's because position last and position now are default set to zero zero. So I need to do something somewhere. Maybe in the constructor. Enemy controller, enemy controller. Make a straight line but with more points, like six. No, I want to do this for now because then it'll only print out hopefully one move value, won't it? Hang on, how do I clear this? What does clicking, why is clicking doing that? I don't understand. Oh, I just killed the terminal. Oops. I thought 
the bin sign would clear the terminal, but it actually destroyed it. How strange. Uh, let's go back to linear interpolation for a second. Oh my word, it's just like broken, has it? View or terminal? New terminal. There we go. You can see how it's moving there. It goes like very quickly. And then it gets stuck at 9 for a while. Well, look, we can do it with a uh, classic old linear interpolation for a second. So we can just do this. Which should be simple, right? Linear is just here to there. If you want, I can put the new line in. How about that? Oh, hang on. Do I have to start it from the terminal? I do. Yeah, that's not quite right. Like, it, it's not waiting. It's just that's how long it's meant to stay. Moo looks good, but it's it's the actual interpolation logic that's incorrect then, surely. Yeah, I'm watching this tick up at a normal rate. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's just cooking carbonara. Ooh. So how come it's being interpolated so stupidly? I'm going to assume some of it might stem from the fact that it's starting at zero, zero, but I don't actually think that's the whole issue. Behind the screen are your points. What do you mean? It should be 150, 150 to 300, 150. It starts at 0, 0. Hmm. Well, for now, let's hard code some stuff just to try and see if that's the root of the issue. So, when we're creating an enemy, let's make it so. Position last is equal to maybe that will help solve some things. I can make it print the position, I could. Maybe it's the drawing function that's wrong. It's possible. Sure, boy. Hang on, where am I? Enemy controller. So here we've got our print statement. The move we've decided is fine. So let's actually print off X, Y, like that. Do you want to print out that? I want to print out that. Yeah, can that work? Or do I need to put in 0 and 1, maybe? I don't know if that matters even remotely, but let's try it. Should work. Oh, getting it to start at the right position seemed like a smart idea. Yeah, look at that. Right at the end, it seems to get really, really stuffed with where it's sitting. Is there a way when you're printing floats to only print it out as an integer? I guess I could do this. I mean, he's donut's not here. We can just do this. No one's watching. Okay, that's much easier to look at. Yeah, so it's not properly updating, is it? It's like quickly moving through the coordinates. Okay, yeah. Definitely getting it to start at the right position is a good start. With printf, you can use d for decimal and i for integer. Yeah, I know. But we're not doing um, printf. We're doing fmt print. I don't know if it works in a similar way.
Why is there no option to clear the terminal? Oh, there is. It just doesn't work. Is this terminal okay? Like, you can't right-click on it sometimes, most of the time. They go from 0 to 300 now. Control C. What does that do? Oh, that quits it. Why does Control C quit it? That's weird. But sure. Anyway, um, yeah, we can make it move from 0 to 300 if you want. Control L might clear the terminal. Okay. Uh, we want to be in here. Let's make it go from X300. From Y0 to Y500. That should give us, like, plenty of space. And then we'll make the timer a little bit longer. So we'll make it happen over the... I mean, five seconds is fine, right? That should give us, that should give us enough time. What kind of game are you coding? We're going to make a Toho clone. Which is a bullet hell. There we go. Yeah, it really gets stuffed on that 99 at the end there, doesn't it? This is just meant to be linear interpolation. Hang on, I'll make it stop a bit sooner. The screen size might be like 480, I forget. Let's make it go to 400. Let's do that. Show the linear interpolation code again. Um, where is the enemy movement? Why am I in bullet controller? This stuff shouldn't be open. That's confusing. Oh, enemy controller C++ isn't even open. Okay. Let's open that. Here we go. So right now, X and Y are just being lerped based off the X value and the Y value. The lerping function is literally just, well, uh, here. A plus B minus A multiplied by T. And then control L works on Windows and control C in his old v what, VT100 thing. You up from current position to target, not last to current. Is that what you're meant to do? Would that matter? Because we can do that. Presumably you're meant to... You're meant to lerp from where you're, to where you're going, right? Let's get a current index. Let's try this then. Let's try this then. Oh yeah, we're doing from where you're at right now. By current index minus one. Well, you said you're meant to go from the last index to the current one. So this is the last one. This would be the current one. No? I don't quite understand. You have two points A and B, right? Zero is the first point and one is the second point. And your move says you're in the middle of that, move equals 0 0.5, right?
Yeah, current decks already aimed at B. Well, that's what we were doing. I don't get what you mean. Is it because I was doing position now instead of current position dot X? So is this correct? It's just this this to left bit needs to change to current index, maybe. So I was doing position now and then to the next position. In which case, it would just be this. I can try that. Yeah, okay. So it's a it's the syntax that we used here that was incorrect, not the not the logic. Well the logic was incorrect, but like the idea of it being now to then was not incorrect. It's just now being now in the table, not now literally. Well that looks horrid. Are you sure about that? have I mistyped something in? Current index, next index, current index, next index. That looks very bad. It like jumps straight here and then like slowly moves off the bottom of the screen. And we've like decided that Moo is correct, right? What are your points? Oh, hang on, I need to put on more music. Because YouTube apparently can't do that. Um, put on Coffee Lounge. The points are 300 zero. 300, 400, one. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. So it's going from X0 up here to X down here. Sorry, X here doesn't move, and the Y should go from 0 to 400. Right? Where's Y0 on the screen? Up here? At 0? I can make it start at Y50 if you want. It looks good except for the initial jump, right? No, it looks worse, doesn't it? Because before it was moving normally and then just stopping for a bit. Now it's moving very quickly and slowing down at the end. No? Like, I'm making it start at 50 now, which is like here. Control L doesn't work. Please, for the love of God, let me right click and clear this terminal. Here we go. So look, if I press E, it should start at zero, yet for some reason it's starting at 300. Is speed still cosine interp? No, we switched over to linear because it, it was meant to be simpler. We can do cosine though. We can try that if you think it will make anything different. Is it this bit here you're looking at? That's a very dumb mistake to make. Thank you for pointing that out. I actually looked specifically at that as well and I couldn't find anything. Hmm? I'm not sure what you mean, Ackerman. Why doesn't this work? They get things not running. This hasn't changed. Weird. You run the release build. Did I type in debug? Hey! Timo. Excellent work. Excellent work, Timo. Good advice. Then the speed would be exponential with linear interpolation. Was that part of the issue we were getting before? That's awesome. Look, we can put over a... Um, we can put in the old movement and see what it does. I don't actually remember what that does. It draws like a little diamond or something. Oops, I just hit debug while building.
It still sort of pauses, but I don't think in the same way. Why is it pausing there? Are those two points like the same? Basically, yeah. I mean, what it should do is go from 32 to 132. Oh, okay. Let's just make this like 132 and then let's do it easier than that. Let's go from uh, 100, 100 to 200, 100 to 200, 200 to 100, 200, back to 100, 100, and then finish. Can you put the lerp back for testing purposes? I can. I just want to see what this does quickly. Because it could be the cosine stuff that's making it pause. I see that. Hey, it seems to actually draw a square, though. Not that I think that's what we wanted. We would like to have some sort of curve, but this is okay for now. And we can put on lerp as well, if you want. Yeah, lerp looks perfect, doesn't it? That looks good. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. Thank you, Timo, for the help. Oh, in this IDE. Sorry. In this IDE, if you hit um, this, it doesn't go down a line. I was kind of expecting it to, I'll be honest. Let's see what happens when we just throw cubic at it. Without any other changes. It's very strange. I kind of like it. I have no idea what calculations it's doing, but it does like a little loop. This is like the weird alien ship stuff that was just not working properly. Looks really neat though, doesn't it? Let's do some vector interpolation then. 2D vector interpolation pathfinding. Or just path. Maybe. Oh, I just downloaded someone's PDF file. What am I looking at? Jesus wept. Downloaded someone's science paper. Bilinear interpolation? This looks neat. I don't know what we could use it for. Maybe we could use this in the background somehow. It's meant to just be doing this, right? Like, just a square. Yet it decides to move in such a strange way. Hmm. Oh, maybe it's because this stuff here is still a little wonky. Hang on. That's a simple thing to change. Make this the current index. Actually, hang on. This whole thing might just be... Uh, this whole thing might be a little more fixable right now. Dot X, dot Y. Let's do current index minus one because it makes more sense that way. Okay, let's try that. Oh, get out of here. By linear interpolation, maybe. Here you are again. Hello, man. I mean, that seems to work okay, doesn't it? That doesn't look too shabby, does it? Anton, do you switch same somehow? Someone asked that earlier, and I didn't know what to say. That doesn't look so bad, does it? It's kind of looping around in a sort of weird way, but it's sort of circular. Considering we've sort of fudged it, that's not so bad.
There's a red circle around it now. Top left isn't best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The top left's bad because um, right now, if you're on index zero, it just makes it up. What we could do is we could just... Um, could could we do... If we're at point zero, we could just get point one and point zero and, like, pretend point one is behind it. So could we do, like... I don't know how the maths works. Are you allowed to do, like... It's a pretty decent circular shape. Is it is it okay to be like let's just assume that it started that much before like make that up how do, how do you do you just minus point 1 away from point 0 like sorry do you do this do you do do you calculate it with like current index dot my minus current index minus 1 what would that do I'm assuming that would always make it want to start in the top left. But what would that do? You get me? It shows how long the stream's been going on for. That doesn't sound so bad. I guess someone before said they thought they... Oh, everyone thought they installed Franka Z, but I guess it's just an actual feature. That will error. Oh, that will error. There's no minus one. Sorry, I meant this. So I meant this. I guess just next index. Something like that. So from zero minus next index. Maybe? And then if we're at the very end, we can say that it's next index multiplied plus current index. Maybe? Because you'd think the logic would work the same for both. Both side, both the start and the end. If we're trying to just sort of guess where it might be. As long as it looks a little bit smoother. I have no idea what it might do though. It's const. Oh. Let's try that. No, that doesn't really work, does it? Well, it sort of works, right? What are you making? We're trying to make like a Toho clone sort of thing. You have another XY error, do I? Oh. That's good. Thanks, Timo. You got a good eye. Y, X, 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 Y, 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 X, Y, Y, X, X, X. Yaws. That would explain why it looked so much weirder than I was expecting. Makes a little heart shape. That's kind of cute. Not that that was the intention, but we've managed to make it look like a sort of heart shape. And if I spam it like really fast. Never played Toho, but you always wanted to. You can go play it now. It's on Steam and stuff. The, the, uh, the current Toho, the last one, and the one before that, and I think the one before that's on Steam. I think the last like four. You could also download them. If you buy yourself a key, from uh, Japan, so just quickly fly over there and get a CD. Um, you can download a copy, you know, probably from a website that you could probably find on Google. You don't know how you make bullet patterns later, but they look at the, they. But if they look, you c but if they look, you can take the last point. What? Only the last two main games. Well, they've released um, Four Seasons and Wily Beast. But I thought they went and then re-released the older Toho's on Steam. If they loop, you can take the last point. Yeah, we could do that. Anyway, I don't know if that's actually any better. What, what would the actual maths there be? Or do we have to use vectors? Vector maths to try and figure out... Hang on. Say this is point zero. And this is point one. I want to get this imaginary minus one that doesn't exist. And I want to just assume that it's this distance away, but in the in the other direction. How would I sort that out? Would I have to put both x and y into a into a vector and do some maths on them? Because right now I'm just trying to do minus and plus, and I don't think that's quite what you're meant to do. Minus delta to the vector.
minus delta time? Minus, or oh, what do you mean by minus delta, sorry? Delta, wait, is delta the difference between two points or something? So do we to add in mu or something? Delta is in the shift, the mu. The mu. X or minus X. Oh, sorry. Hang on. X zero minus X one minus zero one. How do you come to that? Or is that just a normal maths thing that you reckon I should know? Current minus next minus current. x1 equals x0 plus x1 minus x0. This sounds like maths to me, brother. But thank you. So like that. And then I guess we do the same thing at the very end, where if we're trying to calculate the next one, we do the inversion of that. Let's try that. That's just for the start, actually. How do you calculate the last one? So the mirrored point would be x0 minus... x1 minus 0. Okay, thank you. x equals 20 and x equals 21. Yes, no, that's completely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because x1 minus x0 would be just 1, if it's 20 and 21. And x1 is the same as... 20 plus 1. Yeah, okay. I see. I understand. Thank you. So if you want to get the next point in the current index section, the mirrored point would be- we would just be doing it- instead of trying to mirror it that way, we're trying to mirror it that way. Your name should be actually be a command. Oh, what? The two ends. How do I get the mirror one up here then, sorry? I guess I can do the same sort of thing, maybe. And then you can tell me why it's wrong in just a moment. So here, everything here is now minus the minus kinds. Minus the minus signs. Everything here is now the inversion. So this... I like that. I'm gonna blindly type that in and see if it does anything whatsoever. It's much easier just to hit build and look at it instead of actually have to try and figure out the maths. Hey! That doesn't look so bad. Considering it actually has no idea, like, the point here doesn't have any possible idea of the point down there. That's not a bad, uh... That's not a bad estimate, is it? It's a slowly growing function. Oh, wait, hang on. Hey, Tommy. Search for Google. Ackerman function. It's one of the simplest and earliest examples of a total compute computatable? Computable function that is not a primitive recursive. Sure. My name is Woolen because I thought the names looks, you know, thought it sounded kind of cute and nice. But yours is named after a terrifying world absorbing algorithm. I like that. Pre Moonscape algorithm with Twitch Prime. I don't have Amazon Prime, so no, no, uh, RuneScape for me. That is good enough for now.
Like, an implemented carousel from MS... Mac OS Finder. Hell yeah. I miss the carousel they used to use on Apple devices. Hey, bike Karami. So theoretically, right, we could make the enemy start at zero, zero, move towards that point, and then start moving in a square. Then here they're going 100. We can just like repeat this section twice. And then at the end, have them go off the top of the screen again. So this should make the enemy move into 100, 100 diagonally. Rotate twice, and then move out. It will look good if the start and end point are different. Let's try this for a second. Nah, it's broken again a little bit. I guess that's just how it decides to calculate that. I kind of like it. Even though that's completely non-intentional. I like it. I guess I could have it move off the bottom, like, the very, very right. So if it's here at X, Y, 100, I can make it move off 100 to 0. Minus 100, maybe. I don't know what that's going to do. Do you have a duplicate point of what's happening? I oh, know, I just copy and pasted it, so I'm making it spin twice. Can you format the points? I kind of wish I had an easier way of making these look. Like, I could do maybe a using and just call it P or something. I kind of like that. One point per line. Oh, sure, we can do that, actually. This might be easier. Looks like we have a duplicate point right there, yeah. Good eye. So it goes 100, 200, 200... Honestly, I actually don't- I don't really know what it's doing. It just looks like a bunch of numbers to me at this point. A hundred? The two hundred? Two hundred? This one? To 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 that one. So it should go off the top of the screen. Yeah, it looks pretty good, doesn't it? Maybe the bullet should be a bit bigger. It's a little jittery, but it's trying its best, you know? Especially if you time the spawning with the music, it starts to look really trippy. Sorry, bye Tommy. Bullets are a bright colour, they're just too small, I think. It feels like an actual shooter then, doesn't it? I kinda like it. Alright. Chat, is it time to- Is it time for the worst of all times? Is it time for collision detection? Oh no. I think it is time for collision detection, isn't it? 
Don't say bye to me. I want to. I don't want to go. Oh, I thought you said I'm. I thought I like missed you. I thought you said goodbye. Like I'm off. Just doing my uni. Need to do my uni work. Tommy, you don't want to play Terraria, do you? I wanted to play it with Cake, but he said he wants to play it by himself. And I was planning on streaming it with him. You're just reading what you want to hear. Got me. Alright then. If there aren't been enemies in the endgame, there will be problems. You know I can't just like use someone else's artwork as an enemy, right? There's gonna be something we have to do. Am I gonna be solo terraria I'm just not gonna be terraria for a bit. Which is a shame because I wanted to play it. If you wanna play in June, you can. It's so far away, but maybe. Anyway, um... Let's see if there's any... Any, like, Stack Overflow posts that will give me an idea. How often should we be doing collision detection? Because right now there's a sort of collision detection built into the game. When you right click on the bean, it casts a little square to see if anything overlaps. Move the first 100, 100, see if it moves better. This one. Sure. No, 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 the easiest way to make bullets or squares so easy. No, 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 make, make them circles. I'm, I'm just going to make it as a dis uh, distance sort of thing. Which is the easiest way to do it. That does look pretty good. Does that look good? At some point it just sort of hiccups and I don't really know what's going on. Anyway though. That's why it's 50 minus 100. What makes you say 50? It's just because it's different or what? You went to work in June. Oof. Make it go to the left a bit more. Right? That is what that would do, but... I kind of liked how it was keeping the circle, and keep it kept going to the right. I don't know, I kind of liked it. Anyway, um, let's figure out how we're doing collision detection and how often we're going to check. There's one thing we could really obviously do that would destroy the game, would be for every single enemy and bullet and player on the screen, every single frame, check between... check the coordinate and see the distances between them. Well, that sounds extremely intensive and would have so many false positives. So I want to see if there's anything better I can get off the internet. What's your compile time so far? That. I don't know if it pr prints that anyway, but it's it's that. Computers are very fast. Like a hundred enemies and a hundred bullets. I don't know. It just sounds like a waste. Cause like, I remember I did like that. I did a uh, game development course at, back at uni. Where there's like so many different ways to do collision detection, it makes your head spin. Oh, actually, paint's a better place to do this, isn't it? Hang on, let's bring paint back. Oh, you got paint. So 
So there's like a few ways to do it. Use GKJ. GJK. Gilbert Johnson Stilton algorithm is the method for determining the minimum distance between two convex sets. Or it's a K pop band. Anyway, look. There's a few ways to do it. One way is to split up the screen into a bunch of different spots. That's for complex shapes. Yeah, we're just doing circles. We're doing circles and circles and circles. So one way is to split up the screen, right? And say, we can do like, say the collision detection for the player. We can say, whichever the one the player is in, ignore the others. So this is just for player versus enemy collision. So we can ignore all the others. And we can say for every enemy in this, co in this coordinate sector, say there's like three, check their coordinates against the player. If they're less than like, you know, 32 or whatever, hit. That's one way to do it. And then that cuts out all the enemies that are over here that are unnecessary. You have an implementation if you want to look at it. I want to keep this as simple as possible, honestly. I'd rather try and write something off the top of my head than copy and paste too much. Uh, unless it's like a one-liner that I would... That would be useful. But, um... Do the simple way. If that's bad for performance, think more about it, yeah. What if the enemy overlaps time? Well, that's the problem. That's the problem with this method, is that it's very basic. So another pro another thing you can do is just split up the coordinates so there's even more coordinate spaces, like this. So... There's a greater chance for accuracy. And then you just check all the local ones. So instead of checking... Um... Sorry, instead of just checking this whole space... You check the space directly around the player, and then it may be around in some arbitrary level. That way it doesn't matter if the enemy's over the line, because it's more centralized on the player. Um, obviously the example we gave earlier, there's only four squares, so it's really easy for the player to be near the line. Here's this 129 lines of code. I don't know, I don't feel very good about copy and pasting that. I know in video games it's good to copy and paste a collision algorithm, because they've normally done a better job than you. But because this is just a simple checking distances thing, I think I should be able to write it myself. And that also means if I want to try and improve it, I can maybe copy some maths algorithm off the internet. But at least the base of it will have been mine. Anyway, that's one method. That requires some work to even make these coordinate grids. The other option is just to not do anything. Be extremely lazy and just say for every enemy on the screen, iterate through the big list of enemies and check their distance to the player. And then for every bullet on the screen, of which there will be many, you know, like a zillion, then for every bullet on the screen, check the enemy versus every single bullet, which at that point starts to add up very, very, very quickly. Thank you, K2TOF12D. Anyway, that seems atrocious, right? Because at that point, if there's like 80 enemies on screen and like 400 bullets, that's like a number I can't even begin to calculate. Just K2 is fine. Oh yeah, I remember. Sure thing, K2. Maybe I'll we'll just Google it. Uh, bullet hell collision detection algorithm. Maybe there's like some pseudocode I can try and get an idea. Spatial partitioning. Okay, so... Divide up the game into cells. All right, so I wasn't so stupid. Place update the position of every object in the cell. On collision tech, just check the cell it's in. Yeah, I'll try the intensive method to see how bad it is. That's a good idea. Because the rest of this thing is so optimized. Surely a few hundred thousand uh, computations shouldn't be that bad. After all, the computer is running at 3 gigahertz. 4 gigahertz. Something like that. Did I just delete a bunch of code? Oh no, it's just this stuff. Alright, let's try the really stupid intensive method then. Do I want a controller for the bullet detection? How are we doing it in-game? Where are we doing this? 
Setup beams. Let's have a look and see how uh, how that's was working. Update physics. Okay, they were in the bean file now. Bind collision. Where is that ran? You want to run this on your Barsby Pi? What's the, the the problem is with Donuts one, it's really good, but it's very fast because it only ever checks the bean versus the screen rather than the bean against every other bean. Uh, so what we're trying to do is that, like collide with a bunch of stuff. Update physics. Is it in here? Find collision. Here we go. So he does do this every single tick. He is updating the collision every single tick. And with his, it's uh, checking to see if it's within the, the local bounds, which is very sensible. Especially useful if it's just a square. So he's doing that within bean. I guess we can have it within... The issue is we've got... Instead of having individual bullets and individual enemies, we've got the uh, the controller, so I'm wondering how they're going to interact. What I could do is just do this all in game, honestly. So we could do this in here. Let's let's try something basic for now. <laughs> Raspberry Pi. Hello. Okay, let's do this with an, an, an M enemy controller. Have I got your your list is private right now? All right. Oh god, this is going to be very intensive. The collision is not with beans involve enemies, don't they? The be the beans are just there for to look pretty. Anyway, um, let's make it so. How do I want to do this? Because what I could do is do a get function to get the coordinates of a bunch of things, because the coordinates that you're getting don't really matter. Because mm. right in here, right, I could write a function within enemy controller that does like get all enemy locations. And it like returns any collisions and who it was in like some generic form, you know? Or not even get all enemy locations. We're current all locations. Do you not have a list of all enemies? The enemies are all in different vectors. Right now, there's only one enemy type, so it's in one vector. But they're in uh, they're in individual vectors. And the plan was to have a vector of vectors, but people were saying that that's really stupid in C plus plus. Like it just doesn't work. Return the list of all enemies. It seems kind of weird that I can't just do like a say for example we haven't done this yet, but say there's like you know a yellow. And an orange. You know. It seems dumb to me that you can't just do this. Why can I not just do that? And then put those in there. I was told off of trying to do that. Apparently that's just like not a thing you can do. No? Look at token. I don't know what that means. I speak... Not speak that. I don't know. Okay, well. For now, let's keep up the stupid. Looks good to me. It does look good, doesn't it? There must have been some issue with it, though. I think it's because the inner, the things in those vectors, it's not like a vector of ints or whatever. It's a vector of like, enemy type. You can't do that, vectors are not a constant size. Yeah. Anyway. I guess it would work if you did an array, and you only had up to 100 enemies, so you could uh, do the pointer. Anyway. Are we, are we allowed to do that? Or what? Because what I wanted was just a a list.
Do I want to do that? Or the other side? Or that? I just want it to be like a pointer to the vectors. Like, it doesn't need to hold its own. I just want it to point at these three. Your food. Hey, Wave. I guess I could do this and make it public. No, I could do that and make it private and just have a getter. What's the yellow circle type? It's a thing we've just made up. Literally like two seconds ago. Vector vector int star. Well, this is where the issue comes in, is I guess it's a vector vector of enemy. Red circle struct. So here is the structure enemy. This is the main parent. Here is the red circle. Enemy is a struct. So red circle is a type of enemy. There'll be a yellow circle and there'll be an orange circle. Or whatever. You have inheritance. Sort of. But for a different purpose. We have it so we have it to Is it a vector of enemy or a vector of enemy? Sorry, so these are the actual music, go down a bit. These are the actual vectors that are storing the individual enemies. So this actually has, you know, enemy number whatever, enemy number whatever, enemy number whatever in it. This, I just wanted to point to those three. So one, two, three, you know? I just want this to, to point to these so I can easily pass around all three, all of these vectors. And if I ever want to just get all the enemies, it just points to all of these. And then I could four iterate over that. And return every enemy from the red circles, then every enemy from the yellow, then every enemy from the orange. Just as a big list of generic enemy. Or does that not work? Do you know what I mean? Why are they storing actual data and not pointers? Great question. I don't know. No one's pointed that out yet. Check some C++ docs. Let's leave it for now though, because none of these enemies actually exist and it's just red. It is slower. I mean, they're not storing much data. What do you mean? Should this be... a list of red red circle pointers? Do you reckon? It hates that. You are constantly passing the data instead of, like, a number. Yeah? It hates that, though. Wait, hang on. Is that something else that I broke somewhere else? If I get rid of that... Pointer sign, does it build? Yeah, it builds without that. So what's, so what's, the, what's the issue here with using a pointer? Is it just because I used the wrong syntax? Should I be doing that? It's because it's constant here. Maybe. Are you guys trying to get collisions working? I don't know what I'm doing, I'll be honest. I'm now getting confused by pointers, which wasn't something I was having issue with before. Hey, Baron. I'm going to go back to what was working before. This seems dumb to try and change now. It was working okay. Anyway, let's just pass this. Can we make it public? Or do we need to... Hmm. Maybe I do the collision detection in here then, I guess. Or just do it within the tick of enemy controller. Vector vector enemy pointer. Would that work? Does that work? 
And then what? In inside here, can I do? Where's the? Where's the? Is it this? You're doing good. Hell yeah. Oh, this is the carbonara, right? Oh, no, I don't want to set it. I want to add stuff to it. So I guess I'll do that in here. Can I do this? And then if I get like a zillion other types, I just add in the other types of enemies in here. Whatever there. And then does that let me go through this enemy list? And point to all the different lists. Does that work? Bon Abad. Oof. What Karabranara is it? Don't forget to remove enemies in the destructor. What? What do you mean? We're not going to get rid of the lists. The lists are going to stay there always. Smart pointers. I remember being told about smart pointers. That probably doesn't work. From the vector. The enemies do get removed from the vector. At some point. Where is Tick? Oh, it's just here. Here, look, we're doing the old erase from move if stuff. Where they get chucked out of their vector. Here. Now you have a vector generic over enemies, right? What? What does that mean? So now you have a vector generic over enemies. What does that mean? Anyway, look. We can do our collision detection and... Oh, doing inheritance. No? What? I don't understand. <laughs> There's so many keywords are being thrown into my chat. I like that one. It's just pasta carbonara. I can understand that sentence. One vector can contain all structs that have enemy. That's the plan. The plan was to have individual vectors for each enemy group. So, red squares. Red whatever right and then have those be red squares and red whatever you know and then those can all be their own individual structs like that right and then to have one container that holds all of them that holds all of these vectors you know So keep thinking, you might. I'd say leave that to Donut. You feel like it shouldn't be something that should be that hard to do, right? Just have a vector pointing at all these other things. Because right now what we can do is just ignore that for a second. We can just have it copy and pasted for each enemy vector. An unordered map for the list of enemies. Okay, I'm going to leave it for now. This is not what I meant to be doing. I meant to try and make some quick and dirty collision algorithm. So let's just do that. You can't have a vector that has ints and strings. Right, okay, let's, let's stop for a moment. Let's just, let's just go back to making our other horribly slow thing. Thank you, Tommy. Hello. Let's do a very stupid for loop, right? For red circle? Oh wait, const auto. Does it need to be const auto pointer? Wait, hang on. What's the syntax again? I've now forgot- I'm so mind flooded by everything that I've forgotten the syntax for a for loop. The types are different. Can't have different typed vectors in a vector. So do proper inheritance or continue with this data-oriented approach. Okay, I'm starting to see big, big downsides of data orientation. But that's okay. It was a, It's a learning exercise, after all. So for every single enemy in the red circles, we're going to check them against every single bullet. Which is why we should definitely be doing this in the game class, because in here we have absolutely no concept of bullets 
Yeah. Okay, let's do that instead. God, this is going to be so stupid. All right. An enemy controller. Don't, don't, don't tell Donut. We're, we're about to do something very bad. Just gonna get rid of that keyword there. <sighs> Feels so freeing. No more secrets. Nothing hidden between friends, right? Everything can be public. Because now what we can do... Wait, is it that or is it... Is it that? That's not right, is it? What came back? Nothing. Nothing happened. Yeah, no, no, no worries, man. I don't... That's not the right syntax, is it? Because that's... Oh, maybe, that, maybe that's the right syntax. I thought that's do, but maybe I'm thinking incorrectly. It's a method pointer. It's a meth pointer. So for every single enemy in the red circles... And for every single bullet... <laughs> God, this is dumb. I hate it. Every single bullet in uh, bullet controller dot all bullets. It feels feels so dirty. Bullet controller bullets. Oh, it's gone. Privacy, security out the window. And all players shot. Don't overthink it. Exactly. We got every enemy. We got every bullet. If. An anti-cheat like Vanguard. Yeah. If. Enemy. Controller. Dot. No wait. Sorry. If enemy. Do not come back before the stream ends. I hope not. You'll see this. I guess that's right. Chat, how do you check to see if two vectors are close by? Is there like a mathematical function for that? Surely it's not checking if the if the x value of each it matches the x value of each within a certain amount. Or what? Cause what you could do, I guess you could do uh Distance 2? There shouldn't be a distance 2. It's just a vector. Close by, but not the same. Well, what you could do is you could... It's not normalizing. What's it called when you, uh... What's it called when you turn something from minus 1 into 1? There's like the basic maths function for that. You know what I mean? Absolute. So what you could do is you could do abs now dot x plus abs bullet dot x and and so we can say if these positions oh wait this minus that so wait hang on This is SFML, yeah. This whole thing needs to be absed. So if the absolute of the position minus the position is less than 16, and the absolute of the Y and the Y is less than 16, then they're close, right? Is that a thing? I could make it a function, but let's just see if this works. We could do uh, enemy dot destroyed equals true. Oh my god. Yeah, that, I like it when, when that happens. 
And then we do bullet. Dot destroyed equals tree. Distance between vectors. Vec A minus Vec B minus length. Is that... That's probably less dumb than that, isn't it? If... Vector A... Vector B... Vector A, vector B. There is a length function. I have a length function somewhere else. In maths, maybe. Maybe. Is that this? Is, is length squared? Is that this? Hang on, I've got this somewhere. I've got this in player movement, I think. Vector doesn't have a length function. Yeah, but I thought I was calculating that. It's this. Yeah, it's the standard high part of these two. You can use length squared. It's this, isn't it? Though? Length squared, but square root. We're trying to avoid those sorts of- This is a collision detection. This is already meant to be bad. Right? Okay, let's try that. Like, this is already bad. I don't want to start adding in square rooting as well. Unless? Oh, is the distance just that? Is it just that? That's not right. Oh, is it the two lengths? So we do this dot x and this dot y minus this dot x and this dot y. Is that two lengths? Call cool length squared on the vector difference. Is this actually easier than this bollocks I had here with Absolute? You've been told to Zoom call your teachers every week. This is too much social interaction. Frightening, brother. Sriracha. Bacon wrapped halloumi. Halloumi's good. Vec A minus Vector B. Vector A minus vector B dot length. Abs is mathematically wrong. I'm not sure how hypot works. Call length squared on the vector difference. What are you making me do, brother? What do you mean absolute is mathematically wrong? Is it? I thought that would get... Oh, actually, I mean these... No, it should be. No? Does that not check to see if the positions, as if they were on a graph that only went down and right, are within a certain value? One vector minus the other. That's a lot of calculations, isn't it? That seems like way more work than just minusing the, uh, the x and y from each other. Is that actually what you want me to do, Timo? That seems like an enormous amount of pro uh, programming. Not programming. That seems like an enormous amount of calculations. Sure. Why? That's... We're doing this for every single enemy and every single bullet. We're doing the hypotenuse of their x and y and the other x and y, and then doing length squared of that and checking to see if that's less than 16. Every single tick. Isn't that an enormous amount of maths? No, no, not high pot. You just want length squared of... That's what dot product is for. You used these words before. Length squared minus... Oh, okay, that's way better. Wait, hang on. Does length squared take in two vectors? Length squared takes in one vector. Can you just minus the vectors from each other? Is that a thing? I thought you can't do that. Oh, that's not so bad. It has operator overloading. You get the vector from bullet to enemy and take the length to compare. Okay, this, sorry, this is way better. I thought you wanted me to do that. Which is like a hundred calculations. 
Space partitioning? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're almost certainly going to be doing space partitioning. But just for now, I want to get something dirty on the screen. Oh, that's nice, Timu. That'll just... Will it create a new vector, then, that's the equivalent of having done X minus X and Y minus X and pretend that... What does length squared do again? Multiplies together their x's and their y's. Why am I doing length squared? Sorry. Hello, theatre. What's the point of doing length squared and not just checking to see if those two values are? So you don't use square root. So I need to do 16 squared, which I guess I can pre-calculate. Do I know what 16 squared is? Maybe I should know what 16 squared is. 16 times 16. Oh, it's just 256. Is that why you wrote 256 earlier? Did you write 256 earlier or was I imagining that? My brain's turned strange. Square root is not needed after looking after less than small number. I see. Hey Chris. How's it hanging, brother? Ooh. Chris, oh, how, how do I pronounce this? Christian Parpart? Thank you. The raid. Hello. I might have mispronounced that horribly. But thank you. Hello. Yeah, you wrote 256. I see. Why doesn't this work? You cannot assign a variable that is const. Wait, hang on. Oh. Maybe? Oh, yeah. Hey, eh? Gotta go see you in 15 minutes. See you in 15 minutes, Timo. Thank you for the raid. Hello. It's a cute Pepe, you mate. Debug. How laggy is this gonna get? Okay, I've got an idea. I think that shooting a bullet destroys every single enemy on the screen. Also, apparently you can shoot left if you're holding against a wall, which I hadn't realized. Neat, I guess. That wasn't the intention, but I guess I'll leave that in. That's kind of cute. Oh yeah, because I made it so it keeps your, uh, it adds in your own movement momentum when you're shooting. So I guess you can totally shoot diagonally if you do like that. That's kind of fun. A nice and balanced mechanic. You too, see you. See you, man. Thank you for the raid. Anyway, um, why? Let's check, let's make it like a tiny number, right? So theoretically that shouldn't do anything, right? Wait, am I taking the enemy position? Oh, you're right. Well, that would make a lot of sense then. It's checking the enemy to see if it's colliding with itself. Good thing that works. <laughs> Can you make the beam smaller? I could, but... That's kind of a horrible thing to say, isn't it? Yo! Horrible collision detection does work. Look at that. It's disgusting and probably quite slow, but honestly, it's... I think it probably is very slow, actually. Hang on, let's get like a bunch of things on screen. Let's get a bunch of beans on screen. Do you want to make it so we can shoot the beans down? Do the beans have a dot destroyed function? Yay for easy 2D de collision detection. It actually does seem to work okay, doesn't it? Shooting the beans. Re rem removing the beans somewhere else. That seems pretty satisfying, doesn't it? I kind of like that. Okay, we'll, we'll leave the beans. We'll leave- don't worry, we'll, well, the beans will stay. The beans will stay always. I suppose. Anyway, the collision seems pretty decent. It does. So we can also make it so the enemies- we need to make it so the enemies can shoot as well, right? So why don't we make it so the enemies spawn automatically so I don't have to keep spamming the E button? Oh, dot F. Hi, Lich. Okay then, well, let's make it so every... Right now I've got it bound to pressing the E button, right? This stuff? 
So let's remove that and tie it to tick. I'll tie it to update. Tick interval. Okay. Tick. Every single tick is going to spawn a new enemy. That's going to destroy the frame rate. Hmm. Let's make it every other tick then. If tick modulo 2. Ah. There you go. How many enemies is that going to be? That should only spawn like 30 per second, right? Oh, wait. Hang on, I'm not allowed to do that. Oh, tick interval. Oh, hang on, I'm not even passing in the current tick interval, so I actually can't do that. Carotines are coming in C20, but we'll make this easier. Until then, every 10 ticks. Yeah. I guess I can just do this up here. It's just a dirty little, little program to write up quickly. Is there like some really easy maths I can do for a second that's like, if time since last tick, like modulo five, is that like every five ticks maybe, you reckon? Is that a thing? Let's just see what it does. Maybe it, maybe it won't do anything or maybe it will crash the program. Tell your CPU to China. We're getting built in throaty threading. Maybe. Hang on. Are you not allowed to do that? Can you not do modulo on a float? C20 will, will have ranges, which is awesome. Ooh. I haven't watched any Valorant streams, no. Myself. Oh, you can't modulo with a float. Okay, we'll do a time since last tick. Okay, this is just stupid. This is this is very stupid. Let's let's just just do it every tick. <laughs> That's fine. You know what? I might even have like a random RNG thing built in here somewhere, but let's just do it every frame. I should definitely have some built in timer. So I don't have to try and do this. Oh my god, that's slow. Although it's only slow for a bit. A little bullet hell. Yeah, look, you can try and destroy them. Funnily enough, shooting... Doesn't seem to lag it out too much. So this is literally spawning, like, zillions of enemies. Right? I guess I could spawn the bullet inside, like, an edge here. Because I don't... Actually, I think each bullet can only destroy one enemy, but look, we can clear up the frame rate by sitting here. Look at that. That's terrifying. Computers are pretty fast, aren't they? Though we can spawn in all these beans in the background and have them bouncing around and interacting with the walls. And then have this thing here interacting here. Penetrating bullets. I can just make it so the bullet doesn't get destroyed, yeah? Hang on. Dual bean. Many bean. Why is this not a You know what? <laughs> Hang on. I've frozen. I've frozen it. Pepe hands. Or oh, I hit counter in that bullet so it only hits like three enemies. I could do that. I could just make it so destroyed as, a, as an integer. Chat, I've frozen virtual VS code. Oh no. Oh, reopen the window, please. How good is its autosave function? Very good. Sick. Let's just move it back to being tied to E, honestly. We've had enough fun for today. Please wait warmly. All right, it's back. Is it capturing? It's capturing. All right. That was strange. Um, do you want to make it so the enemies will shoot at the player? Every second, it will shoot one bullet towards the player. That seems pretty neat, right? Does that mean I need to make it so that the... Shoot linearly or homing bullets? Shoot linearly. 
Or to good audio soon. Games can take millions of vertices. VS Code might crash with thousands of characters. Good point. Good old Electron. Is this Electron? I think it is. I kind of hate Electron programs, I'll be honest. Um, anyway. That was saved. How are we going to sort this? Does that mean the enemy controller needs a, con a concept of bullet? Or vice versa? Get direction of player to enemy. Normalize it. Apply a velocity velocity to the bullet. Might work. Because then they can also have streaming built in. Streaming is in Toho streaming. Like where a bunch of bullets are coming towards you. So you go to one side of the screen and then slowly move along. Atom. Maybe Atom. Anyway. We need to pass in the bullet controller to enemy controller, I think. I think I think we're going to need that. So let's have our game. What is all this extra rubbish? Game.header. Here we go. I wish there was like a organized top. I don't think there is though. How are you, RNG? How are you, Turbo Bender 2014? A new bullet controller? No, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll do it within the same one. I don't see if there's any reason to have a multiple one. But look, we can have in a uh, bullet controller here. Enemy controller can just have a pointer towards it. Bullet controller pointer. My bullet controller. That should work, right? I don't see why not. VS Code is kind of slow. I just typed in bullet hell, didn't I? Bullet controller dot header. That probably works, right? Do I need to do it with, with that? Is that right? Hang on, what's the difference between that and that? I think I've been using them somewhat interchangeably, like, like some sort of weirdo. Let's get the heck out of you. Oh, did you hear the bird go like, thwam, into the window? Two pigeons were hanging out earlier. He wanted to say hi, but it flew away. Spooky. Anyway. Oh, we'll, we'll just pass it in here, I think. Went whack out of the window. Christ. Let's pass it in there. Pointers can be null or null pointer. References can't, and the syntax is better for reference. Sure, then. The syntax is better. Let's just throw some stuff in like this. Where are we con spawning the enemy controller in? In game, up at the top, I think, right? So the enemy controller also needs to be passed in my bullet controller. And now this way, I think the enemy controller has its own bullet controller. If you don't know the difference, you should Google it. Pointer arrow reference dot. Thanks. I mean, I've known the difference at some point, but it seems to come up so little in what I write that I just don't pay enough attention to it. I know it's like a very vital... It's like knowing what a vowel is, if you're trying to speak English or whatever. I know it's very basic, but um, I seem to get by without it too much. I just kind of poke it in occasionally and see if it works. Although I think in this program we've been barely using the asterisk, so I guess we are just using references. Anyway, I've now got the bullet controller in here. So let's say when we're updating the enemy, you do like letters. Hell yeah. Let's say when the enemy is moving as a space invader, if you try to pass a null object to a reference, you'll get a compile error, but with a pointer, you'll need to check if it's null. So more runtime checks and possible crashes. Oh, thank you then. Okay. Is it faster to pass a pointer though than a reference? Let's have the enemy move. Here's the enemy moving. And then let's have it so the enemy shoots every something. Passing is basically the same. Shoot. Boring bullet. Vector 2F. Enemy 
shoot her position. About or start position. Velocity. Which will be a pointer towards the player. Enemy spawns this from distance to spawn a billet aimed upwards. Aimed at the player current locale. No performance difference. Technically, a reference is just a pointer handled by the compiler. I see. Thank you. Okay, then. Is that not right? Oh, maybe this is right. I don't want shoot player bullet. I want shoot boring bullet, which I guess needs to be in the header. Where is that here? Take that out. Your variables should be pointers and assign references to them. Okay. A rule of thumb. Why is it called a rule of thumb anyway? I don't understand that. Oh, anyway. We want to make it so... Thumbs rule. I could see that. We want to have it so the enemy has some sort of little timer in there, right? The player has sort of a timer with how they're shooting, right? Where, what is all of this? How am I storing that? Shot interval, time until shot. So I guess we can store these in the enemy. We can store this in the individual enemy, I suppose. Because every enemy will probably shoot, right? If we want to, we could pass this in the constructor, but for now, I guess we can make it shoot every half a second. The rule of thumb have been said to derive from the belief that English law should is allowed a man to beat his wife with a stick so long as it is no thicker than his thumb. Is that actually what it is? That's pretty morbid, Christ. Hi, Bonfire. Jesus. Okay, um, English law, Christ. Anyway, every tick, we do this. Time until shot minus equals delta time. And well, actually, we can just copy and paste this stuff in. Time until shot minus equals delta time. This is if can shoot. I'm actually, I'm going to keep this as a boolean because I might make it so enemies can't shoot according to some rule. Um, I'll just keep it here. This is like a waste of space and energy, I know, but I'm gonna do this just for my own human brain. Englishman. Mad lads. Programmer uses light mode is no real programmer. A lot of people in uni used to use it. I haven't seen anyone else's computer screens since then, but a lot of them used light mode. Japanese Shinto's all stories. I've played Toho. Oh, I've done it as two different things here. Alright, that ought to make it so every enemy shoots this often. And actually, we can implement this timer in-game. Because it's kind of stupid that we haven't done that yet. Let's just do this. M enemy spawn rate. For testing. Time until spawn. So we'll just do this. Uh, and then we'll copy and paste this stuff over into game. We should definitely have like a timer making function. And then every tick. Time until.
Delta time doesn't exist here, so I guess that's just tick interval. So in here we spawn in the enemy. We can leave it on E if we want to spawn some in manually, I suppose. That's not too bad. Bap. Alright, that, that should spawn an enemy every half a second. And the enemy should shoot a bullet every half a second. But right now the bullet isn't actually aimed at anything and this won't compile. So the current location can be... Um... Wait, hang on. Is there enemy dot... Update enemy. Enemy dot current. Actually, is it position? Is this? How do I generate a player, a vector towards the player? Sorry, chat. How do I do that? As a as a velocity. Do I need to compare both the current position and the and, and the player's position and generate a length according to that? So is it, um, length squared, do I have to normalize it, sorry, then? And that just generates, is normalized generates a number between 0 and 1, based on, so it sort of creates you a direction. Uh, do I have that in maths? Normalized A. So I could just do... Oh, it normalized. Enemy position... Player's position minus enemies. Player position minus enemy position. I need to have player position in here somehow? Does the bullet controller have a, meth have a reference to the player's position? Hmm. Normalized gives you a vector with length 1. Thank you. Okay. Gives you a unit vector. Length squared gives you a float of how long the vector is. No direction at all. Check how slow that is. Multiply it by a constant so the bullets aren't easy to dodge. Okay. I need to somehow have the player position in here. Honestly, I could just pass it in here, right? Or is that dumb to be passing that in constantly? I don't know. Come to dash. Bye, Bonfire. Thank you for watching for a bit today. We'll leave for two team. Bye, fam. Have a good day. I like this that you've got a good use out of wall wink there, Becca. Hmm. Maybe the enemy controller could just have a reference to the player, hey? That doesn't sound so bad. Enemy controller. And then in the header, we can try and pass that in. Or in the header, in the uh, constructor. Probably being disco was to bother you. Cool, Leo. Like that. With the type and name are the same, Michael's problem is not really. I think it's okay. I would ignore it just for now. I don't think this will compile, will it? Let's multiply that by like 100. Let's see what happens. It hates that. Hang on, what have I done? Oh, I need to include the player header. Music's a little loud in that.
Did I get rid of the time until next shot stuff? Hang on. I think I might have... Wait, where did I add it? Did I add it into bullet controller? I added it somewhere. Okay, I guess I'll just put that back in the enemy controller header. I don't know what happened to that. Sure. I mean, I thought I'd already added that. Give ZFG your congrats on getting a new world record for 100%. I'll be honest, I haven't watched his 100% in a little while. The game has been changing so much, it's been really hard to try and keep track of it. But that is really good. M all boring shot. Player position. Oh, whoops. Legal if. Else if time until spawn. What is this else if for? Wait, hang on. Where's player.c++? Oh, that's if shooting. Oh, yeah. We can just do that. M all boring shot unknown. That's probably because there's an error up at the top, right? Or an error in the header. Am I missing a close parenthesis somewhere? Missing a close parenthesis. Oh. What did update enemy need? Oh, I was going to pass in the player, and then I decided not to do that. Sorry, does bullet controller not have M all boring shot? Oh, it's called M all boring. Okay, my bad. Position now is not a member of M player. What's it called? Or is it hidden? M position now. Oh, I guess we could do a get position, or I could just make these public. That's probably okay, right? Fewer secrets. Yes. Is it not? Oh, it's called M position now. Sure. Multiply by 100 F? Wait, hang on. Shoot boring bullet is a position and a velocity. This is a position. This here is a velocity. Maybe it needs to be 100F. Is that what's... Yeah. Then it will kill you. He probably will, but he's not real right now to see all the errors I'm making. What's wrong here? Start position. Are these named incorrectly or something? Oh, it's just a message. What's here? Am I not allowed to send in the player? What's wrong with that? Vector 2F can only accept floats as ints, not ints as operators. You include players in your C++. Did I not? Does it say that in the error message somewhere? I don't honestly know how you can read any of this bollocks. Don't call it M player in the method header. Oh, of course. Where did you read that, though? There's like all this extra crap here that we just don't need. Like, this is just a waste of space. You didn't read it, was just a guess, so I might be wrong. Okay. I think that might be right, though. We did rename it there. You read the code. Okay. Illegal call of a non static function. Like that, maybe? Wait, is it called M bullet controller? How am, I, how am I storing that? Oh, I'm calling it M bullet controller. My bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to get my instance to do its shoot. 
I was calling it like it's a static function. I thought that syntax looked really weird. I just couldn't put my finger on why. Player, player, bullet controller, player. That seems correct, doesn't it? You could come up with your own code conventions to avoid these how am I calling it moments. Just a suggestion. Yeah. I Yeah, that's correct. I just forgot, I'll be honest. I normally don't use the M underscore stuff, but I'm trying to stick to what Donut had written before, because at least that way the program seems consistent somewhat. Are you passing the player when you construct enemy cons? I thought I was. Where is game? Are you sure player player is fine? I'm, I'm not, honestly. I'm not sure. But... I didn't think that would be the issue, honestly. I like, can get rid of that and change it to that. A player is a type, you can't have it as a var name. A player is a class. Can you pop and paste the error somewhere so we can take a better look? Imagine if there was word rep built into this. Class is a type. Oh, okay, my bad, sorry. You can't have it as a var name. Oh, hang on. That'll be the issue then. It'll be because player in this variable is the same... Hang on, hang on, hang on. Player here. I'll just just call it. See, I don't... What? Are you not allowed to do that? Apparently that is like pre-owned by the compiler. That's what you were talking about. Okay, we'll just call it M player. Whatever. Syntax. T, new player, something like that. Have I done this somewhere else? Am I calling this bullet controller? I believe I am. Okay, let's fix that as well. Target. Target. Is, oh, is that why you did T? For target. Yeah, you can call it target. Yeah, T works. Stops a little bit of confusion, right? Well, I shouldn't complain about that. Yeah, I know. I don't think that's that's uh, that's for the programmer. Yeah. Anyway, what's the actual error? Cannot convert argument from bullet container to bullet container pointer. Oh, hang on. So. In the game, his references to bullet background and enemy controllers are standard optional. Here you go, parallel nines next to the C, C make. This stuff. That just clears the outputs. It's not word wrap, if that's what you were thinking. You'd think it would just be like a right click option, or it would be somewhere in the menu, but. No, apparently not. Anyways, the issue that is that I'm trying to place in a standard optional. Can I... Can I do... like that? Is that illegal? Is that a terrible move? What happens if I do that? You're not allowed to do that, are you? That doesn't do anything. You're aware of SnowRunner? I'm not. Do you reference it with the pointer? Optional name.value Really? Because the optional sort of holds it like it's a little one one slot array, right? And that's why you do in place here. Because there's nothing- oh, okay, well. Please don't crash. Hey, it didn't crash! And it's shooting at the play- yeah, 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 it just works. It just straight up works. Yo, that's cool! Obviously the bullets are way too slow, but it, it literally just works. Yo, it's like a bullet hell or something. And if I stand perfectly still, they should all shoot at them from whatever angle they're in. And you could do tiny little bits of, um, little streaming like that. 
That's really cool. That looks really cool, doesn't it? Hang on for a second, Beans. And I can also shoot at them. There's no collision detection between their bullets and me. But I can shoot at them. Add focus. Yeah, I might add a shift. Oh man, that's so cool. This game is coming along nicely. Looks good, doesn't it? Do a little bit of streaming. Oh, that would totally have worked if that was Toho. Alright, sick. That's really cool. Alright, I'm gonna go take a pee break. I'll be back in like a minute. Just have a look at this for a moment and look at the nice beans. Yeah. I'm back, brothers. How's it going? Oof. How's it all going? Imagine wool hee hee bullets. Just lots of tiny wool hee hee samoids coming at you. Chris, look at the stream. We made good progress. Oh, chat. Me and Chris had a. We ordered some Papa John's yesterday because I was feeling to have. I was feeling like having a massive amount of crap. It's really good. Um, I got a nice like Greek one. Better and a ton of black olives on it. It's papa good. Out of all the shit ones, it's all right. Like I think it's probably better than Domino's, Pizza Hut. That's it really. What are the other options? That and like the other like random ones, like random chains. Obviously, it's better to get like a posh artisan London pizza, but we just wanted a bunch of crap. Sometimes it's good. The bullets form a nice double helix when it runs. Yeah, can you see, Chris? There's like. Hang on, look, I'll just make this massive. Yeah. Look, if I move, the enemy's bullets all move to face you and shoot you. Look at that. And you can shoot the enemies as well. I can spawn in a bunch of enemies very quickly, and then, like, you can see, like, massive, like, flurry of bullets coming down. Looks really neat. Also, meanwhile, you can see the background zoom in to make it look like you're actually moving somewhere. Oh, the stars. Yeah, they're just little stars in there. That is really neat. Man, I'm proud of that. This has been some good work. Thumbs up. Yeah, the bullets are too slow. I mean, honestly, there are bullets this speed in Toho, right? This when, like, there's a billion bullets being shot at once in, like, a blizzard. And you're meant to, like, slowly stream them. Hang on. Mind if I have a slice chat quickly? Little Caesars. We don't have that in the UK. It's actually very good. I really like cold pizza. I don't know about the rest of you. Eat it near the mic. Tuna, I will ban you. Make the bullets a bit more random. No, you don't want that. You want them to be on a set timer. Some good pizza, lads. You got olives on it. Yeah.
It's got um, mozzarella, tomato, obviously. But actually, like, big chunks of fresh tomato as well. And uh, little chunks of feta. And a bunch of black olives. And I think a bunch of onions as well. It's delicious. It's actually delicious. You know, two giant pizzas for, 12, for like 11, 12 quid. Absolutely fine. Hmm. Deep dish pizza hut from the 80s. I've only had like one or two deep dish pizzas, honestly. I don't know about the hubbub. I think I've never had a good one. Is my hair sticking up in a weird way? Oh. Wait, hang on. That's not hair, that's sellotape. That was confusing me a little bit. Hmm. We can try and do this one-handed quickly. Haha. Uh -huh. I can make the bullets a bit faster, maybe. You could have like a difficulty multiplayer or something that makes that vector a bit faster. This pizza had actually that good in the 80s. Decently, you've never had either pizza. I think I've only had Pizza Hut a couple times. I don't know if I've ever been that big on it. You're gonna go since one doesn't want you here. No, I want you here, Tuna. I just don't want you to be weirdly perverted about me eating a slice of pizza on stream. Kind of makes me uncomfortable, I'll be honest. You know? You know what we could do with the beans? We could make them bounce off to the right over the HUD. Oh, Donut, you're here, brother. Look at this. They shoot, we shoot, they all shoot. They move in like a pretty nice little little circle. Oh, and it, did it crash? No, did I click off of it? I think I clicked off of it. Oh, maybe it crashed, actually. Hang on. Yeah, it crashed. Ooh, I have no idea why. I haven't crashed it yet. No, exciting donut. You get to see everything. Did it run out of memory? Maybe. Maybe I have a memory leak. Yeah, we haven't ever seen it crash. I think I've, this is the first time the program has ever crashed. Ever. That's exciting. You can help me with that tomorrow. No worries, man. I don't know why it's crashed or why I can't open it again. Hmm. Hmm. Toasty. Thank you for the prime sub. Thank you. Hmm. I wonder what happened. Yeah, it must be like a divide by zero or something, right? Because it's not stopping. I'm going to have to have to crash it with Task Manager. Woolen.exe You're going to get a good luck. Bye, Donut. Thank you for popping in. I think, he, I think he's gone now. Don't tell him about the collision detection code. He doesn't need to know. Wait, hang on. Can I just hit stop? Oh, I can hit stop. Can we run it in- wait, we were running in debug, weren't we? We were running that in debug mode. No? Breakpoint time. Well, the issue is I don't know what caused it. Let's try and run it again and see if we can make it crash again. I think I should make the enemy bullets just a little bit bigger. Stand in a bullet. I don't think that's the issue. It was after I was telling Donut, like, look at this, it makes like a nice little ring and then they leave. Oh, it crashed again. No, I got it. It must be a memory issue, right? Surely. I just spawned in like a million things. Paused on breakpoint. Wait, hang on. Did I manually make a breakpoint? Somewhere. It says here, paused on breakpoint. Continue? 
Where? Where is this breakpoint? It's under my, uh... Hang on, this is under my webcam. I'm going to move my webcam for a second. Ooh. Let's move myself. Something went wrong. Caused by exception. Where? Maybe an optional became empty. It's possible that it's due to the pointer at the player. Somehow. Let's do a check. If can shoot and M player. Is it called M player? Let's try that. Maybe it somehow lost the pointer to the player. It would be nice if it's over the exception came from, yeah. Well, now we sort of know what the issue is, right? If can shoot... Okay. I guess I'll do another if in here. I just want to see if the player exists. I guess this isn't a null. Like, it's not- sorry, it's not an optional in the player. It won't work. Well, because that works in, uh, in game, right? Because it is an optional. You can do... If the player exists... Uh, where do we do then? Yeah, no, here we do if the player exists. It's a reference, yeah. Well, how do I check to see if it still exists? Can I not? And player dot. Oh, it's null pointer. Can I not do that? It will exist. That won't work. Does it not work? I like the Java syntax of just checking to see if it's equal to null. So, what do you think the issue could be? Let's try running it again, but maybe we put like a breakpoint. Here. And here. Don't know if there's any point in doing that. It crashed again. But it didn't say why. Hang on, why isn't this a breakpoint? At least we can get it to consistently crash. I don't even know if this is the issue. Then it was here for a second, yeah. Okay, let's hide the shooting code for a second. Oh, is the, the program running? Maybe I did have a breakpoint somewhere by accident. Well, it's not crashing now, is it? You want to see if the enemy list is doing, maybe it's updating or something. Yeah... It's definitely the shooting code though. It's this. Maybe there's something to do with normalizing, maybe I'm passing in a zero or something. Look, there's a dividing here. Is there a chance that this could be a zero? I'm doing hypotenuse. It might be a division by zero somewhere, like, to do with this, right? What do you reckon? It seems possible, doesn't it? It shouldn't be zero. It shouldn't be. Yeah, that seems to be the impasse we're doing. Normalize crashes when enemy position is equal to player position. Well, that's not the crash we've had, is it? If you were the bullet in the zero, it could be zero, but you're not in the enemy. Hang on, then. So if I go stand up here... I guess I'm not perfectly lined up with the enemy. you think at some point this would uh, line up, right? 
Maybe not. Maybe it's along like a very specific float and there's no chance. I guess I could go into the top left. No. Hang on, the crash was like in a sort of specific spot, wasn't it? Oh, it doesn't seem to crash there. Why isn't it crashing anymore? What was the crash though? I like what was the cause? Was it a bunch of space as well? Somewhere around here. The fact that it isn't crashing is good. No, the fact that it isn't crashing is bad, because we don't we want to solve the crash, you know? It's not like we did anything to fix it. I don't know what caused the crash exactly, just that it seemed to crash in a consistent way and now we can't get it to crash anymore. Anyway, it's definitely the shooting code, right? Can you go back to the stream to see the crash? You can, but I'm pretty sure that's all we were doing. For the controller, shoot boring position. The current position, and then a normalized position. Why does this crash? This minus this, in case that's zero, I guess. What we can do while can shoot... We can just make it so it doesn't fire if the player's inside, right? Can you do inline... Inline if statements in C++, like... Can you do this? Can you do that? Condition true false. So if it's not equals to the same, so if they're different, we do a normalized. Otherwise we do... We just send it from 0 0.f, 0 0.f. You know? Speed of zero. Oh, maybe that's sort of dumb. We make it shoot straight down. X, Y. Maybe? So if in the weird occasion that the player is directly inside of the enemy, make it shoot straight down. Does this look correct? Let's put it on a new line. Let's put a colon after the normal stuff. Oh, do I not? You're right. So... If the player position isn't equal to the enemy position, send in the normalized. Otherwise, send in a vector pointing directly down. Should that be okay? I can't be right. Oh, whoops. I guess we'll just... Wait, hang on, this shouldn't be in a bracket. What am I doing? What about that? This is just like bracket issues we're having now, is it? Shoot a boring bullet. Oh, SF. Did I? Alright, that works. Although I don't think that the crash that was the crash. That should solve a crash, right? How long have we been using C? Only a few years. I did I think I first did anything in it at uni, in like a module. So, you know, random C C module. And then I did my dissertation thesis in uh, C and then Real Engine. And now I'm trying to learn a bit more. So not a terribly long time. I'm normally a Java programmer, which probably explains my uselessness with references and everything. Anyway, that looks pretty good, right? Raycat? Who dat? It's probably fine. Oh, it crashed! It crashed again. We got the crash. What caused it? 
What caused the crash? Tell me. Mysterious IDE. That's not an IDE and it's just a text editor. What is nsadul.thread? Nuclear throne DLL. Some timing issue. Maybe if you press space when a bullet spawns. Maybe? No. You know what it could be? The issue could be a concurrent modification of the vector. Click on the debug console next to output. You may only use the extension to help you develop and test your programs. Sure. Oh, exception thrown at here. Access vi yeah, yeah, access violation. So you reckon this is it trying to write to the player, the enemy bullets at the exact same time? If it's a writing violation. Um, when the enemy shoots... I think I've somehow spawned an enemy twice within a frame. No. I don't know what it is, but um... In shoot boring bullet, most likely a null pointer, do you reckon? You've had to win your own foray into C++, oh good luck! Do you have a project in mind? It's writing somewhere a thread shouldn't write. More likely a null pointer. Also, is it Java where the vector can be concurrently written to? Was that something my friend made up? Because they were like, oh yeah, there's like a cool... In, a, in Java, it's like an array list, you can use it. But you can uh, remove from it and add to it at the same time. Is this true or is it complete dog poo? But now you're keeping... Simple. No crazy games from scratch or anything. That's fair. Do you have any end goal that you want to do? Does it not give you the line number for the exception? It gives me the memory location. I guess it's paused. Can I see that location in memory somehow? I mean, I just posted it in chat. Can you look at your cmake.file? Click on it. It doesn't do anything. CMake lists file, sure. There you go. You reckon I might be missing something? That wasn't helpful. This is useless. Exception thrown at memory address. It's very early on. Definitely game dev and being able to do interop with other languages. Maybe some node add-ons in the future. Ooh. Maybe pass in G3. What? What does that mean? Um, what, what's the goal there? That sounds cool, Ray Cat, though. What does G3 do? The compiler flag. If I'm honest, I have not used CMake lists before this project. I don't know what you're wanting to do. That's target compile options. Yeah, you don't use CMake, so you don't want to do, but the extra debug options would be nice. You could do sanitizers. I kind of wish I knew what caused it. So is the cause... I think it's caused by me shooting. I'm not certain, though. G3 is debug info. F sanitize address. Hang on, let's try and get it to crash again. So I want to see if it is consistent. It doesn't seem to be con No, it's not caused by me shooting. It's nothing to do with my input. It's just me spawning enemies. Sometimes something happens. MVSC slash G3. It's occasionally adding more threads to the call stack. I don't quite know why. And now it's not. And now it is? So if I let them off the screen, do you think they... The fast memory error detector can find runtime memory issues such as after use blah 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 I think I'd rather just the game doesn't slow down so I assume so. 
Yeah, I think the I think the enemies are getting destroyed properly. I kind of it's kind of mesmerizing watch them just like spawn in. All right, well. Add a dress sanitizer to see where the possible crash is. Well, I have to get it to crash, right? And I don't know what the cause is. Not null, but your own memory. It could be a thread accessing another thread's enemy, but I don't think that's it. interesting to see how you add Danmaku particles to this. Patterns. I'll be interested too. I might reuse some of the stuff I've done for enemy movement to try and make it so it's a uh, like a sort of path they follow. Like I might draw a path set waypoints along it and then have additional options for it. It's compile time. Sorry, is the what do you mean? Isn't the sanitization is compile time? As in, it's just a thing I add in. Sent it. Okay, it's not a thing I can just shove in there. We make the code available online. We'll keep it private for now. I mean, it's very. It's not exactly private, I'll be honest. Check the link he sent. I did, but it, it was very long. I don't know what I'm looking at in here. Is it a thing I download? It's a GitHub post? It's a memory detector for C++. It finds errors. It's very fast. The average slowdown is double. Pub LVM. It's only been tested on Linux Ubuntu. It's not been tested on Windows. I can't imagine that's going to be much of an issue. Linux OS X IS... Is that a good idea? Am I going to be the tester? In order to use it, you need to compile and link your program using Clang with the F Sanitize address switch. To get a reasonable performance, add 01 or higher. To get nicer stack traces and error messages. What am I looking at, man? Shouldn't we try and solve the bug more instead of trying to stare at all these GitHub links? Do I need to download something for that to work? Surely it's not built in. Or maybe it is. If it's, if it's, is it part of the um, the Microsoft Visual Codes? Crap. It's not obvious. No, I didn't think it was an extension. Oh, I thought it might be an extension, but is it a thing that's built into the compiler I'm using? Is it just something I can type in now without having to install anything? Is that this stuff, you reckon? Compile options 03. So do you reckon in here under debug, I could also type in... After 03, maybe type in... F san... Oh, wait, how do you spell sanitize? Hello there. F sanitize equals address. Is it that? It slashes its option character. But here it's a dash. Oh, that's with Clang. Oh, I'm stupid. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is the Microsoft stuff. Oh, it's ignoring unknown option. Hello, Quasar. Have I misspelled sanitize, maybe? Oh, that's the what you wrote. Uh, hmm. If not debug. Is that what that means? Or if debug? If I put that here, maybe, actually. Hang on, that might be in the wrong spot. 
You need to install it in Visual Studio first. Do you want me to launch Visual Studio? Visual Studio 2019. Wait, do I need to do that through the installer? I have MSVC. I had it on 61, but the option is different. I can just try throwing it in and seeing if it does anything. Maybe it'll magically work. It didn't throw an error. I have Visual Studio installed in my system, yeah. Is it something you want me to run through the installer and install like a plugin? You know how the enemies sort of move in like a sort of rhythmic pattern? I could definitely just make it so that's like part of the gameplay. So the music sort of times with what their movement is. You know, I've got no idea whatsoever what caused that crash. Let's make it so bullets collide with the player and blow them up. Let's make it so the enemies fire every... Hang on, the enemies should be firing every half a second. This was definitely originally in here, I wonder where it went. Nothing works. Don't worry, I tried installing Linux yesterday. It took about four or five hours and then I gave up and watched Avatar with Chris. And I sort of have Manjaro installed in my system now. I think, maybe, like sort of. Like, it sort of works, but, like, not really. It just seems like a massive hassle and pain. Um, just to make all the programmer buddies think I'm cool. You know? That's because Donut didn't. What, Manjaro? Did he make Manjaro? Impressive. I got the, the waifu version of Manjaro. I mean, I thought I was downloading the, the top one on the downloads page. I don't remember what it was called, but apparently it got... Apparently I got the waifu version. At least that's what the installer said. It's, I know I definitely didn't get GNOME. He was like Gen 2 for a year. Anyway. Time for tiling window managers, i3 gaps. I know, I just got like everything was such a pain. Like mouse movement feels really weird. And like, literally just that is enough to make me want, not want to use it. Just let alone the fact that just trying to go to do something as simple as screw around with a file explorer just seems to be so much more hassle. No, Woolen, it's different. It's a hassle. Just use Ubuntu. I mean, if I'm using Ubuntu, I might as well just keep using Windows. I figured if I wanted to use Linux, I'd use something quite fast, but I don't have eight years to try and set up Arch. Like, I'm not trying to convert for any particular reason. I just wanted to see if I could get a better frame rate in Team Fortress. That's literally it. I just wanted something fast, you know? Steam likes Ubuntu. I know. Hey, small. Yellow by three. There's no tiling manager for Windows. What? Anyway, hey, small. Hello. Small. Look at this, brother. Boho's looking good. Look at this, small. I removed the beans for a second. Look, the enemies shoot at you and stuff, and you can shoot back at them. And look, they they go around in like a little path and stuff. Gnome and KDE can be slow depending on the machine. I wanted whatever was fast that still had some stuff built into it, but not like a ton of crap. Which you imagine would be Arch, but I don't want to spend eight years with it, so... Isn't this cool or small? Anyway. Let's make it so... KDE is bad ever since 4 came out. Oh. Gnome is bloated, at least some memory would still be fast. Is GNOME not free? KD Plasma 5 is really good. Anyway, sorry. Stop being nerds. We need to program some waifu video games, alright? This is very important. Hit radius. Oh, I guess that's how I should be doing the calculations. Hmm. Well. Where am I? Here. Alright, so let's make it so they're actually a bit bigger than that.
All bubbles, boring, player shot. How do I resize it? Can I just do that again, down here? What else if Gnome wasn't free? They removed features from KDE. How are you doing without being in the spotlight of Donut's intellectual rigor? Hey, Toby Benner. I'm doing okay, I think. I've now forgotten what I was doing. Let's make it so the... So I called it set radius. Alright, let's do this. Actually, honestly, I could put this at the bottom just to avoid too much confusion. Maybe? No, I can't. I actually have to have that there. Kind of annoying there. Oof. Um, ba 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 ba. Bullet sprite dot set radius. Is it? Okay. I want to set the radius, I want to set the color, and I want to set the origin. So, this honestly should be its own method. So we should do we make a little method here maybe. Actually, you know what? Even better than that, I can make a little little mini function here. Bullet designer. So I want to send in the bullet sprite, which is const auto whatever. I want to send in the sprite, it's new radius, it's uh, float origin, because it will be a circle for now. Actually, we can just make the origin half the radius, so that's, we don't even have to do that. Um, let's do sf color, color. Can I just pass it in like that, you reckon? I don't know if I can do that. Somebody just started learning Python, so you'd have an advantage next year. When you start programming, this should be fun. Hey, Happy. You've been making TF2 on YouTube. I meant to make some yesterday, but I didn't have any time. Um, but this week I'm doing... I'm starting to do less hours of streaming, so I might have more time to do it in the breaks. Remind me, chat, we're only streaming for four hours. Four? We're only streaming for five hours during the first segment, and three hours in the later. Not six hours and... Four. Cut an hour off the end of each stream. Hey, Lindley. More programming. Hell yeah, brother. Someone beat Banjo Tooie in six jumps. Ooh, your exams went well. That's good to hear. Good to hear, good to hear, good to hear. Anyway, sorry. Um, let's pass in these things. Am I allowed to do that? Actually, hang on, I don't even need to send in the bullet spray. I can just redesign the bullet spray. Like that. Your exams were literally just cancelled. They were supposed to be in like two weeks. What are you meant to do now then? Hey, Pika boy. Your exams start in June. Your midterms are over. A lot of exams and stuff going on right now. Oh, anyway, uh, bubbles, we need to have something, and then for the colour it can be, um... What's a nice colour? I'm gonna Google for, like, a bubble colour. Uh, colour picker. I like that Google just has, like, a colour picker built in now. Let's make the bubbles, like, this nice, like, sort of bright blue colour. So that is 2181255. And let's make them like a little transparent. Uh, how big are bubbles? Bubbles are slow and have a big hitbox. So let's do 0 0.75. So we want hit radius. We want this. We want large. Hang on. 
If we want to get this value from this, we do hit radius large. Can we do like, I don't know if you're allowed to do this, but can you do static cast int? That might be unsigned. I don't actually know how it works. Can I do this? Is that dumb? Do you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to go from here and I'm trying to get the, the fourth value out of here, which is the value of large. Go has that too, really useful. It answers only like 3D, 2D graphing. Oh. Yeah, time's gone all funky lately. Warframe is good, but you would like to just say graph is that and get a good graph. Warframe's neat. What's included is merely 25 to 50% of the actual curriculum. You've got mechanics that are not discussing Mario 64. What the heck? Hang on. That might be dumb. Hmm. Hang on, what, what color are boring sprites? Did I design that? No. What kind of color would a boring bullet be? It'd be sort of like a red. Wouldn't it? I think it's sort of like a red. If it's boring. Two five five four eight two zero and fully transparent, uh, fully opaque, and the player bullets can be like a sort of nice green, I guess. How about a little four four one nine four twenty one two five five? Let's try and chuck that in. This might be stupid. Yes, that's stupid. Boring bullets are great. The problem with that is that they're hard to see, so you want to make them readable. Okay, chat, here's a question then. How do I say get the fourth enum? Out of something. So if I want to get, if we're in here, we have this list of numbers, but for whatever reason you can't still fl Oh, music's loud, is it? In C++, for whatever reason, you can't store floats in an enum. I'm sure there's a very explicit reason for that, with how they're stored. It might be undefined... Okay. Undefined behavior. Well, basically, what I wanted to do was say, I want to get the large one, which is, you know, the fourth element here and the fourth element here. I want to say large and get the large one. You know what I mean? Also, that is too small. We need to make this different. Let's make tiny two, small can be three, medium can be four, large can be five, massive can be six. It is defined. Oh, thank you. Let's try that then. Static, cast, hit radius values. Is that stupid? Oh, hang on, that's in... Hit radius values enum name. Oh. Oh, sorry. You mean like this then? Wouldn't hit radius that work? Maybe they can't be casted to the underlying types. Hit radius values. That contains the actual values. Can you access them like a like a like an array and just get like the first value? In which case then. Wait. 
Can you just do that? Maybe you don't need to do any casting. Hang on, I just copied over all the colors. I have, haven't I? Hang on, let's copy this. Let's go back to when the colors were there, because I don't want to have to retype those out. That's an array. The value is in the is in the. Oh, is that an array? Oh, I'm stupid. This is an array. For some reason, I thought that was an enum. Static cast int his radius large. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I was being stupid. I thought this was a. I thought that was an enum for some reason. Like that then. Whoa ho ho is T. Whoa. Seven Ray could also have a method that takes the enum and returns the radius using a match. Well, that was the plan, but we, we can just do this for a second. It is a bit weird to pass all this stuff in right here. Let Turbo Burner make the OST. It sounds like a good idea. Stream programming is actually brilliant. The chat will find all the mistakes for you. Oof. Enormous brain. Hang on, what have I done? Eight eyes are better than one. Yeah, give types to the array. Standard array floats six. Oh. Why hasn't that had issues before? It's auto, maybe. Oh, 2.f. You can't count it's 5. Oh, you're right. Well, I mean, that built anyway, but it's a waste of one space. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so if I want boring to be medium and player to be small, what did I decide? Medium, small. Medium. Small. Oh. Oh, stretch. Alright, neat. You're off to audio only. See you in a bit, man. Yeah, that seems to work. It's correctly, it's correctly redrawing the uh, the sprites as being big or small. And now they look a bit more reasonably sized, I think. You can do a little bit of... A little bit of this. The beans are getting very excited. I can't believe we're fighting SFML shapes in a bullet hell that I made. It's actually kind of fun. Alright, the hitboxes are obviously off, but ignore that for a second. It's kind of neat, isn't it? Professional Woho player. I mean, the speeds are just so that it's actually sort of playable, as long as you keep track of the enemies off the left of the screen. If you let them pile up like this, it's all of a sudden way too much to deal with and you have to start doing a lot of streaming. Oh, I would have gone collided with there. Also, I guess I could make it so the enemy bullet gets destroyed when it hits the player. So let's do that quickly. Game tick. So for everything, for every bullet, and also, let's check that against the player position. M player, M position now. Let's just go with that size for now. Let's also get the bullet destroyed when it hits the player. Oh, wait, hang on. That's for every. That's when the enemy collides with the player. That's stupid. Although, it makes sense. 
The player should be destroyed here, honestly. It's not going to do anything, but we could... That's for the... That's for the enemy... The enemy colliding with the player. What we actually want is the player colliding with the enemy bullets. So... Let's do this. For every... M... All... For every... Boring... If length squared of bullet... Oh wait, hang on. Oh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Bullet dot position now with M player dot M position now. Bullet gets destroyed. That might work. What's going on? I hope you're doing well today. I'm doing good, thank you, Tuck Shields. We speedrun Portal 2, so it's going to be easy. Hell yeah. We're making a Toho clone. It hates that. What have I done? Have I forgotten to close it? For bullet in the bullet list. If leg squared of the bullet position now. M position now is not a member of the player. What's it called? It's totally called M position now. That's totally the right name, isn't it? We making a game? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't understand that. M position now is not an option of... Do I have to do if player as well? Hang on, am I doing that already up here somewhere? I am. Let's just chuck this up here then. M, M position now is is a member though. Standard size is not return as size T. Grumble, grumble. Do I need to use a different thing, like this? That's not quite right. This should be right, shouldn't it? Sure. So the bullets should get destroyed when they hit the player. Yeah, you see that? So the enemy shoots bullets and they all get absorbed by the player if you run into them. But the hitbox is really quite strange. It does mean there's some collision detection going on though. More blasting streams audio through your input on seems... Oh heck. Ooh, that was a big line there. It returns auto, so it returns the, the type of the size method, which is different to standard size, which does return size 2. That sounds painful. Alright, yeah, the hitboxes are definitely kind of off here. I don't know why I'm trying to dodge the bullets. Like, it's not like that nothing... It's not like anything actually happens if they hit you. Oh, there's a bean. Alright, whatever. Sorry, I'm having way too much fun with this. Like, literally nothing's going on. It's just me shooting, like, the bullets. There's something really cool about it, though. Something, like, satisfying when, like, your game starts to become actually, like, a game. You know what I mean? Something really satisfying about it. Auto all the things. 
What am I going to do now? Let's get the hitboxes working properly. So this like minus 256F thing should actually be stored in bullet controller as a predefined, like pre-calculated square of all of these. Hit radius values squared. I could square them on the point, but that's unnecessary calculation if I can do it now. Let's try this. Two times two, that's four. Well, I could do... I could do the squaring. I mean, honestly, just squaring it by hand is fine, isn't it? Three times three is nine. Four times four is 16. Five times five is 25. Six times six is 36. Use auto and let auto const always everywhere except return types. Autoing's good. Alright. Anyway, this should be fine. So in game, where we're trying to get the hitbox sizes of things, we're going to check to see if the bullet would intersect with the player. So for every boring bullet, we would do this crap. Boring. This would definitely be a method that returns this, by the way. Hit radius. Are you going to do more than just game dev? Are you doing anything more than game dev just to share? What do you mean? Right now with programming? No. In terms of streaming, yeah, there's a schedule. You can talk about C++ 20 template stuff. Auto is arguments. Ooh. Should be cool. Anyway, look. Alright, thanks. Uh -huh. it took two hours where everything works fine. Long time to build. Anywho, these are the boring bullets. Let's also check here to see if it's the player bullets. Oh, ideally should just work, right? But watch it not work. Yeah, that didn't work. Well, it's because we're just throwing in hit radius values as if we even have a reference to it. It's actually M bullet controller. Ah, this might start to become very messy. Ever so slightly. Ever so slightly messy. We should definitely have a method for that. Bean should be the game's final boss. I think we can't just do that. No context, expert, vector, or standard format, though. Oof. BLB. See you in a bit, Baron. The bean turned. Nice. Hang on. Wait, what's wrong with that? Enemy is not a version of bullet controller. It what? Sorry? Are these things hidden, maybe? Or maybe to do that, maybe. They're not, they should be public. Where are you gonna head out? Where are you gonna head out? See you in a bit, wave. I've done something stupid, haven't I? Alright, we should definitely just make a method for this, right? Get. Get. Hit radius. Boring. Is there a types thing somewhere? I don't think so. Can I pass in the type, or is that stupid? Like, can I pass around... Boring. Like that. Or is that stupid? Is it better to just have an enum called... Enemy types? Ugh.
Okay, can I use the actual name of the class and just pass this around? Because I don't know if I should inherently know the size here of all the bullets. Hang on, what am I doing here? Why does this not work though? Because this should just be a, like a floating point value. That's all it should be returned here. It's an array of floats, and I'm passing in a static cast of hit radius medium. Maybe I want to do this. This is becoming extremely messy. Ah, uh, it hates it. It hates it. Is there an extra colon I'm missing, actually? Or bracket? Yeah, it might be in. Syntax error. Missing close bracket. Really? On what? There's no missing curly bracket. What does this mean? God, it's getting so long it doesn't even fit on the screen. Oh, there might be missing one up here, actually. Illegal token to right side of this. How about that, brother? I don't get how that's illegal. That should be okay. I guess I don't need that. What am I doing? What am I doing? Let's make a method here. Hey, Baron. Let's just make a method called um, float get hit radius. I want to pass in. Hey, Baron. Brother. How do I pass in here that I want to take in a bullet subchild? How do I pass in that I want to take in, you know, bubble? How, how do I say I want, a, I want a type of bullet? I want a subclass. Is that a thing you can do? You can just take a bullet star or tell your templates. I guess I can do that, look, like this. Or overload it with bubble boring and player shot. I guess I could, yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 I can just make a bunch of these, can't I? Is that better than doing... Is this stupid to do this? Can't static cast to boring. Oh, dynamic cast. Okay. But can you do that just to see if it's of type? So 
So I'm going to see if it's a bubble, a boring, or a player. That way I only need one method, right? It might be possible, I think you should overload it. Actually, wait, I've got a better idea. Instead of passing in a bullet, we type in bullet size. Wait. Like this, brother. Look. We type in uh, hit radius. What kind of hit radius they want? And then in here, we return this crap down here. Where, wait, where is it? This stuff. That way, all we have to do is pass in if it's small, medium, or large. And we can just let someone else bugger around with it. That should be okay. So that means in here, we can make it much neater by doing passing in hit radius large like this. Get risk shit radius. Get hit radius of large. That's much easier to do. That way we're still hiding away the actual floating value of it. Hey Spindle! Ooh. Thank you for the 30, 32 months, Jesus. Hey Spindle, thank you. How are you doing my man? That ought to work there. So that means in game, here, we can go woo! We can do uh, M bullet controller get hit radius for something large. Boring is medium, player shots are small. The gifts of I didn't need I've made to get another one. No frets, Pika boy. You can always wait a bit, can't you? And get a uh, free emote from watching. Twitch looks bad now. What's the bar on the bottom? Wait, hang on. I haven't been on the Twitch front page yet. I've just been on uh, the dashboard. Uh, it looks the same to me. I'm on my own stream. It looks... Maybe I need to open it in Chrome. No, I haven't I haven't received the new update yet. I think. Kinda of weird watching your own stream. I'm gonna get off there. Anywho. Instead of hit radio small, I guess it has to be this. It's still sort of messy, honestly. Why does this here not work? Car, char, illegal character. Like, how how do you want me to do it? Like, dot? Just like a dot? I don't... Uh, maybe dot is okay. Because that... That works. Oh, it's like... That's what IntelliSense thinks works. Is it radius under bullet controller? Yes. It's this, it's an enum. See? This is how it looks on your side. Oh, you're right, it does look different. Oh yeah, someone said before it has your description next to it. What do you mean by white bar though? British banter with a high funk content. Hell yeah. Oh, I should have my Patreon to that list. Anyway, yeah, look, heat, ra heat, heat, heat radius is here. 
Not that I want that to be private or anything, but... It's just... It's just this. It's an enum class. I don't know if that makes more confusion. I guess it's actually just... Can I make it static? Are enums static by default? They must be, right? It should be colon colon. That's right, yeah? Maybe instead of M bullet controller, we just pass in straight up bullet controller. Maybe we don't need a reference to it. Honestly, this should be a static method as well. So we can just do that as well, I think. So if we go into bullet controller, we make it so this is a static method. I see no reason that that should be hidden away like that. Oh, hang on, it's in the wrong namespace. It's in some weird, like, hidden namespace. Ew. That might have been the issue. That didn't fix it. Hello, false. I was looking at your Patreon. You'd like to donate, but you want to, but you're and you're financially able to give more than five pound a month. There's no way to customize. There is, but don't don't feel like obliged to at all. Um, there is a way though. I think a couple people have given like six pounds ninety as a ha ha he he. I can go have a look now. I think that there is an option, but I, I cannot stress enough. I set the I set the maximum to five pounds because that's what I'm sort of comfortable with, you know. But there is, an, there is a built-in option to make it bigger, should you choose, and I would be grateful. Uh, but anyway, sorry. We're on here. We've got hit radius. It should be a static float. Are you not allowed to take that in? Do I have to call it... Bullet controller hit radius. Oh, hang on. This should be, this should be bullet controller as well. Hang on. A few things are falling into place. There's a custom pledge option, apparently, yeah. I think so. That should fix that issue. Is it that, maybe? Because it is static, and we want to use it in a static sort of way. Maybe that'll work. Watching a Let's Talk About Staying Positive video. A lot of people have been watching that lately. Well, um, how many views has it got? Leave look positive. We used to only have a couple thousand. Oh, new YouTube. Oh, it's got 27,000 views. Jesus. Well, I've like not looked at YouTube. It's like slowly piled up, eh? Yeah, but if you, um, if you sort the comments by new, you can see there's been like a big influx lately. At least there had been in my head. Maybe everyone's replying to my main comment. I don't know. Oh, thank you, Minty. Oh. Syntax error. What's up? I think this should be double. It was me. It was Spindle. The static ring would break other things elsewhere. Will it? Unknown type should be preceded by close bracket. What do you mean unknown type, brother? You wait for tier two for a few days after your scrims because you realize you are having to ground yourself really hard after comp scrims. You are wasting time just lounging in tier two. What do you mean ground yourself? Were you getting too involved, do you think? All right, fine. Let's not make it static, even though honestly it should be. Just because that might break stuff, I suppose. You broke down a bit in middle and upward scrim from being overwhelmed. Uh, yeah, I would say ground yourself a little bit more, maybe. Were you very invested in the game? Maybe. That's quite sad, y'all. Yeah. Are you doing okay now? You're put medic. Or was your was like your whole team like yelling and not doing well or because that can be kind of horrible. Hang on, what am I doing? 
Open a container. Get hit radius. Yeah. Maybe I can just do it like that. Maybe. Maybe I don't need to specify where the enum comes from. Stupid sniper peeps, cluttered cons. Sounds like Highlander. I, I don't understand why it hates this. This makes sense to me. It's just trying to get the radius, right? Here is an enum. I'm passing in the enum. What's wrong with that? What's th what's the problem? Explain yourself. Can I convert this pointer from constable bullet control? What? Is it missing a namespace? No? Here's like the hidden namespace up here. Here's get hit radius. I should be passing in a hit radius. I guess I could make it pass in a, uh... We could let it pass in, a, in an int. No, that's stupid. Pass in a hit radius. You were the worst med in the season. You played med because you are most experienced on medic. Hey, you said you were the most med in the season, but you know there was only like another nine people playing medic anyway. It's hard to compare yourself that way. Oof. Why the heck does this not work? Observe. Thanks for the unicorn owl you moves, uh, spike herbs. That's terrifying. Why well, am I missing something about enums? Is this not how you grab the enum value? There are a heck ton of men names though. Are there really? But... Enums are double colons. So why does it hate this? Oh, it's really hard to find meds and open. Yeah, I thought no one plays medic. I thought that's the difficulty. Explain to me, program. Here is an enum. Here is the same enum. What's the issue? That's That should be correct, no? Can I convert this pointer from const pointer? What do you want? Am I passing in the wrong thing? Does this need to be a reference? Maybe you're calling hit radius when you're not under a bullet controller function. This is a bullet controller function, right here. Maybe I just need to make it a... C++ looks weird after nearly two years of Java. It really does. Maybe I need to pass in one of these boys. That didn't fix anything, did it? No. Sometimes adding an ampersand in C++ magically fixes stuff. I think that's how you're meant to program this. Nah, it does need to be a reference. You want to be supportive of that playing med? You played med in pugs because no one played medic. My chat's full of such wholesome gaming medic mains. Awesome. At this point, I might as well just like hard code it somewhere. Sorry, but does no one else think this is really weird that this doesn't work? Get hit radius is a floating point. It's a method that returns a floating point number and it takes in this this enum. Right? This is an enum. Go into bullet controller. Passing in the enum into its own method doesn't work. Why? Why is it colored weirdly?
Do I have to do that? That seems kind of stupid. Doesn't it? I can't see why this pointer is involved. It makes no sense to me. Anyway, this should be this, probably. I'm very close to just hard coding this. Okay. So I am now changing the method to take in... Refer controller dot slash poking to. Well, this is now using an instance here. Okay. This is now instead going to take in a string. Because that's much easier to do. You know? No, it's not. String's stupid. We need to actually pass in that, that radius. Either a dot or an arrow, they should both work. This is infuriating. You have competitive. You realize you don't want to play a dead game competitively and not being merely decent at it. What does this mean, Minty? What do you mean not being merely decent at it? If you're good enough to play in competitive, you're better than most people. Most? You're better than most people. I don't get why this doesn't work. It takes in an enum. Which is that. This is incredibly infuriating. I'm going to try and close and reopen it. Maybe it's an issue with Visual Studio. Well, it's no longer blue. No, it's blue again. Explain why you're blue, please. What does get hit radius return? A float. It says illegal illegal character. Can I convert this pointer? It's not captured. We're not playing Pokemon. Explain yourself, brother. You don't force yourself to be with people, you usually drift away and you don't want to drift away. That's fair. You play TF2 Conk because you think it's fun, you don't care if it's dying as long as there's a team. That's fair. VS Code isn't being captured by OBS. Classic. There you go. <sighs> this is unbelievably infuriating. This should be such a simple thing, right? You're just passing in an enum. Cannot convert this pointer from and to. There's no reference. Reload window. Extensions have been modified on disk. Okay. Const problems. Why would- there's no const. This is just an enum. Is it this class bollocks that's there? No, that didn't fix anything. Class should stay. <sighs> frustrating, frustrating. There's only a few errors. What's wrong with this cur curly bracket? Get hit radius, you're taking in an enum. This, um, like this maybe? Just take in like that? Like this is not an illegal character, this is correct. This is how you type an enum, Visual Studio Code. <sighs> Oh, have you seen something, Baron, that I haven't? Bullet controller should be M bullet controller. Well, I, it was M bullet controller. I've just changed it back now. Yeah, Slime Rancher was good. Some cool streamer played it a few weeks ago. Slime Rancher was really good. I would really recommend it. Anything that scratches that itch, that doesn't make you become competitive. It's one less error. It wasn't an error. Did I even build it after changing it back? Perhaps. Illegal token to write. This is this is incorrect. This is correct. Like what's already there is correct. That's how it's how you type that. Somewhere the bullet controller is const. It's not though, it's an optional. There's no const auto in here either. Competitive woho, hell yeah. Oh, this is upsetting.
There's no reference in here. I don't get why it thinks it needs... Cannot convert this from constant container to static. Optional dot value. Maybe? I... Well, like here. Isn't hit radius static? It's just an enum. Not value, not an arrow after it. Well, like that. Honestly, this stuff should just work as static, and I don't know why it broke when we tried to change it. And for the Eno inside that funk. Oh, right. This is making my, like, eye feel weird. You know what I mean? When something's so frustrating, but gives you so little assistance, it, like, hurts the inside of your eye. Shouldn't it just be bullet controller hit radius? It should be. It should be. And I don't know why it hates it. Missing a value on line 4 is 6. Where? More importantly, why doesn't it work in here? This is within its own class, right? Why do you use optionals? Doesn't everything get created? Use optionals because stuff isn't created at the start, because I need the stuff to be created later on at a delayed... I need the stuff to be created in a delayed way. I, why doesn't this work, though? It has... Hit radius is its own thing. It's here. No? This is hit radius. It's here. He has it. It's his. It's in the namespace. It's even, it even like auto fills it in for you. We'll just move it up there. That didn't fix bollocks. I guess I could do that. Hey, bigger boy, you're in just on the Jisku server, but you can't say hi anywhere. Oh, you need to be um, accepted. Give me a second. Let's see if OBS tries to capture Discord instead of Visual Studio, because they're all Chrome. Here you go. You can talk now. Alright, look. We're going to manually type it in. I'm giving up. This is way- this has taken us like half an hour and nothing has happened whatsoever. What a pain in the ass. We're just gonna type in a 9 there. And we're gonna type in a 25 somewhere else. Actually, wait, that one. Wait, bullet is medium, right? Hang on. What's it now? Why- why don't- what? What's wrong with this? You- you own this. Enum, it's yours. It's here. It's complaining it's constant, but it's not constant. What is constant? Mm. 
the bullet designer thing here? Does this need to not be constant, maybe? I can't imagine why that would be the issue. Is that... No, it's not the issue. Can you show the entire message, please? I don't get it either. What's the problem now? The same problem it has been for the last, like, half an hour. It says, cannot convert this pointer to constant... From constant to... Reference. I can just post it into chat. It's the same error for all three. Where in here does it possibly say that this is constant? Here... Bullet controller is constant. What? This is itself. This is within its own method. This is within bullet controller. It's trying to get the hit radius. It should be taking in an enum and returning something. This worked. Like, just passing that originally worked. So we made it into a method because it's a huge pain. In the variable you're trying to assign or change. I'm not assigning or changing anything. I don't get it, honestly. Does, like, does this need to be a pointer to a float or something? It's... Okay, so what we're doing here is we're changing the radius of a circle. I'm storing this somewhere so I don't have to know what large is. It might be like 16 float or something. I'm sending in this value and using it to set the radius of the bullet sprite, which is not constant. This method is... I mean, it is constant, but that shouldn't be the issue. This is just getting. The only thing that's being set is something completely separate. We're not changing the value of hit radius. This is just an enum here. Bullet controller is what in there? What? It's not gonna get constant. It's either optional dot value. We're ignoring that. We've hard coded it in here. So the issue has nothing to do with any instances. This is just a number for now. This is this. I... Is it the word? You know, it should be double colon, right? Show hit radius again. Hit radius is this. It's an enum class of what is essentially also an int. Tiny, small, medium, large, massive. Get hit radius. Well, it doesn't really matter what it returns, but it returns a floating point value. Hang on. There it is. It takes in a hit radius and returns a calculation, which works. Like this bit, this bit's already been tested to work fine. It casts that hit radius as an integer and grabs it out of uh, this array. Honestly, it should take it out of this array, but that's okay. It's not modifying anything. It's just short- it's just meant to be shorthand for having to type this into absolutely everywhere. Does this need to be const? This is a method. Can you- do you have const methods? Does it need to be const? Is that the issue? Is the method you're in mark- is this the issue? Is it that this didn't have const at the end? It's called in draw, right? Hang on, is it? So? Wait, hang on. Is draw const? Draw is const! Oh, right. Yeah. Oh. My face. Oh. C++. Oh. This language, brothers. So is it because in here, this is a constant function, and we were trying to call what is essentially not a constant function from in there, so we need to put the keyword const at the end? You reckon that will work? This is a horrible error message. That would explain some of those issues then. This is almost as bad as Swift was. 
Although I don't think anything can be quite- that works. Okay. Oh my god, if only there was an error message that they could have written to fix that. Oof. Hi Darknut, by the way. Oh, that's frustrating. What a frustrating error. I don't know if they fixed it, but when I was doing Swift UI, if you get an error anywhere in the document, it will flag a bunch of useless shit along the whole way, and you have to go around and uncomment a bunch of stuff individually to try and find it. Hey, Turbo Burner. Hey, everyone. Is it because my hair sticks up like this? Like, hey, my hair. I'll just leave it. You have watched the Jimmy video for your mental health. I have not done this. Jimmy is a uh, glassy gaming? Question mark? It's on the same sort of thing. No, I don't tend to watch other TF2 videos. Or even my own. I don't tend to watch TF2 videos. Unless they're all 2011 star videos. Oh. That's the good stuff. Alright, so we can go back here. Get rid of this dumb hard coding. What were we even doing here? What is all this bollocks? M bullet controller, get hit radius. M bullet controller, hit radius small. Work. Or do I need to fuck around a little bit more? Does it need to be like that, maybe? Because it's an enum. I don't know. You trim your beard or do you just shave it clean when it's too long? I'm not doing anything with it right now. I'm occasionally like cutting little bits of hairs around here so I don't constantly eat my own beard, but I'm not really doing much with it. Does this need to be... Are you sure that's right, Baron? Because that was the error message that we had before. Was doing this. Like that. That was the error before. That's what I was trying to change it from, to something else. Give me nice Shibuyan records. Put me on Toho Boss and over 7. Okay, this is a few less errors, I guess. Why does hit radius small not exist? Char is not an illegal character in the end of colon colon. You are incorrect, MSVC. This is the correct syntax. We've used it here, for example. Explain. Who wrote this error message? I'm going to punch them. And then apologize, because it's very rude to punch someone for doing their job. Like this is this is a bad error message. That's that's not correct, is it? Does, does it like this? I know it's not a static cast, but does that, does that remove some of the errors? It doesn't, okay. You've grown a beard for the first time in your life during quarantine and you don't know what to do with it. You have a wee buddy or moustached off. You bit- I'd uh, recommend trimming on the inside. Do you want to like show your lip? If you want to have like a pointer? So you want to trim it around like that, so you don't actually see the beard covering it. I think that's the strategy. Do you, want, do you want more brackets, maybe? Maybe they want more brackets. Sometimes that's the issue, is there's not enough brackets, and they just want a few more. They're a little greedy. What is that arrow supposed to do? I don't know. I don't know what the arrow does. The arrow's there. We're dereferencing the optional. Exact- yeah, that's it. Dereferencing the optional, of course. Mustachius. Dereferencing the optional is something I love doing. Explain yourself, foolish program. Why why am I not allowed to do this? Timo, assist. Hit radius is not a part of the bullet controller object. It bloody is. It's here. It's this. It works in this class here, see? Hit radius minimum. Minimum. Medium. 
he here? He go, ooh, small. He reference. In game, though, he go, oof. That's sad. Not work. Try colon colon. We can try a little colon colon. This is so much better than Java. It's given us more errors. The whole line's red now. What? Why do you mean... Ah. <laughs> M bullet is an optional. It is an optional, so it needs to be dereferenced with a pointer. Just try a dot. Uh, why does this programming language suck? I just want. I just want to go. Boop, like a little. Boop, get me that. Boop. Instead, it's like, oh no. You need colon colon underscore asterisk percentage sign to do that. Of course. What module is it in? It's in the bullet controller class. So I tried changing it to just bullet controller and colon colon. It's an enum. It's this boy. He's here. It's him. 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 Here. That. That boy there. Under the bullet controller class. He is a public. You can see him. He is there. It, it, you do that, and he's like, oh no. It writes in bullet control, and all files should be included with it because the other stuff works. Oh. Is there a way you can send me the code? If you zip it, I'll take a better look at it. That's going to take six years, and it's better I just make like a Git repository. I think I probably should just delete everything and start over. It's even here. Like, the autocomplete knows it's there. You know? If the autocomplete knows it's there, surely it's okay. Why is it so bad? Ah. Alright. Let me just put 16.f. Donut can solve that. He can solve all these issues. Yes. Perfect. Hard code your problems away. We fixed it. Man, those hitboxes are very small. They're barely even colliding. Oh! No, wait, no. Yeah, those hitboxes are way too small. And you cannot float, can it? Yeah, it's not a f The enum isn't a float. The enum is an 8. Yeah, so we've done this in a weird way. Because I wanted a floating enum, but you can't do that. What I've actually done is made an enum of eights. Eight, sorry, an enum of eight-bit integers. And then I've made a method called get hit radius that converts that into an enum out of this list, which happens to be in the same order as that. Oh, I guess the hitboxes should add together with the enemy hitbox and the player hitbox. Because right now, this is if the bullet collides with the very center. Change it to char. It doesn't need to be char. Why would I want it to be char? I want it to be an integer, so then I can cast it. So here in get hit radius, I cast the value of that enum. Like, it works here. Get, get hit radius literally works in here. It, it's here. It works. The, it, the function works. Like, it works. We don't need to screw with it, surely. It is here. He works. It just doesn't work in this file, because the file is the Antichrist, perhaps. It's length squared. Yeah, I know. Oof. Anyway, I need to decide on what things hitbox sizes are. Enemy controller. What's the size of this thing's hitbox? Do we know? Have we decided on that? How, how big is the enemy? What's your, what's your size, brother? Draw? It's a 16 by 16 shape. With a, with a radius of 8 by 8. So what it should be doing... When it's trying to collide the enemy... With the player shot... It should be that. Plus... The enemy size. And this should be this plus the player size. Maybe. Why couldn't you use the enum? Maybe cast it to char. 
Why do I need to cast it to Char, though? Is it just because that's what the error message seems to say? The hope will be that that fixes it. Alright, that seems to work okay. No, it doesn't. That works very badly. How's the big brain stuff going? It's frustrating as hell. Enums are bad in this. Why do enums work so well in Java, but so badly in C++? They seem to miss the point completely. The hitboxes are bonked as well. I don't quite know what I've done. <sighs> what what was I using like eight years ago for the hitbox sizes? Two five six. Oh, I was using like two five six, wasn't I? Why was I using two five six? That's massive, isn't it? Oh, I guess I need to square the size of the enemy as well. 16 multiplied by 16 equals plus 256. Uh, this should be 128, actually. You're tempted to rewrite this game in Rust, but you have other stuff to do. You're welcome to. It's not exactly my original idea. Hang on. If I make like a big path here and then walk through it, that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? If I get rid of all the enemies, actually, then just spawn in a bullet. Yeah, it seems to like collide with the very edge of the player. Maybe I want it half of that. He's unreal and get the grant. You know that grant's meant to be for developing the game, right? Not to go into the pocket. Alright, I have no idea what this is doing now, but it, it works. Oof. It's money. Well, yeah, but you get the grant from, from Epic Games because you're meant to make their money back. They're not just, like, paying you because you're making games. Unless? Anyway, my brain is hating this. Curse name. Oof. Let's give up on this for now. I don't remember what we were doing. What, what were we even doing? We were making the hitboxes match properly. Why? Alright. Stop for a second. We need to make it so if it collides with the player, and if it collides with the player's like inner section. This is within- this is within a graze. Hang on. This is with a graze, and this is with an actual hit. Box. So then you would destroy the bullet, otherwise you do graze. Can I just add on the graze? Does that- do you think that just works? Just magically, like just boom. Just works. It'll definitely just work, right? It should be an else if actually hang on, yeah, no, no, yeah, 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 I was thinking about that, and then I forgot to do that. I do not see the grace counter going up. Okay, that must be incorrect then. No, that must be correct. Hang on, why isn't that drawing properly then? In the game draw function, draw the grace text. Oh, am I not updating the grades text? Is that the issue? Where am I setting it initially? Set up... Uh, load font? Maybe I need to update it. Maybe in here. M... M grades text dot... Is it just like that? Oh, it's set string. TJ's playing Halo. Ooh. Good luck with your chore, Exodia. 
I'm gonna be in game draw set text. Grace text or set grace. I don't know if I do need to do this exactly every frame, but it probably doesn't hurt. Hey look, it's updating grazing now. It's only updating grazing every single frame, so I'm pretty sure if you go near a bullet, it counts as a graze. Like, it can count the same graze multiple times per frame, so if there's only one bullet... It grazes a zillion times, because it's checking for grazes literally every single frame. I guess I could have a separate update cycle that checks for grazes. Or I could store a counter of if that bullet's been recently grazed. The easiest option, honestly, to me, seems to be to only update the grazes every... x of a second. So you could graze the same bullet by doing that, theoretically. That seems a bit lazy, though. I guess for each bullet, I could store a variable called grazable. Make a grace cooldown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, each bullet already has... No, actually, sorry. Each each enemy already has a timer for how often they can shoot. The bullet could have a grazable window. Long boy. Just look at that emote. Yeah, brother. He's a very long boy. Yeah, let's let's give it a a what's it madoodle. Why not? Why not? Let's give it a cooldown. Let's call it a grazable cooldown. And that's so you can graze each bullet every half a second. Why not? Why not? M graze rate equals 0.5F. Time until can graze a, cl a global grace cooldown no 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 in a, in a toho if you i'm pretty sure if you graze like eight bullets at once it the counter goes up by eight right i'm pretty sure that's how it works Ugh. yeah okay 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 Oh, I'm starting to get, like, shivers from, like, stress. Oh, horrible. Alright. Bullet controller. Do we have an update bullet thing? <sighs> update bullet, which is called in here. Each bullet already has a bunch of crap on it, yeah. Update bullet. I can also have a void. I can have one of these things here. Void. Check for... Oh wait, update graze. Update graze counter. I'm gonna just pass in the bullet, honestly. Pass this crap in. Also go into the header, grab that, whatever it's actually called. You can get ray tracing for Breath of the Wild in an emulator now. Yo, that sounds really cool. Why don't we have it in Wind Waker yet? Wind Waker makes a lot of sense. A lot of people playing randomizer. Time until can shot. Get rid of this if can shoot. Time until can graze. M graze rate. B fire rate aka interval. Oh, I can do format document, can't you? Oh, hang on. Here we go. Bullet. Well, I don't need to do anything. This is just constantly counting down to zero. 
I imagine. Constantly counting down to zero. And then... Where in game, here, when I'm doing grazing, I can do... Game update tick. Here we go. If bullet dot raise hang on bullet dot t t where am i bullet dot time is equal to zero. Oh, hang on that should be that should be in here if it's if it's equal to zero um we do oh jesus where the hell am I in this program? There's so much text on screen. Too much text, honestly. Too much to be staring at a screen for. It should be in the header. Game grays. Here we go. Oh, Jesus. Bullet dot time until grays. Oh, it can be less than or equal to zero, I guess. Equals bullet dot grays, right? All right, that might be very slow, but it might work. It hated that. Why did it hate that? Is this need to be 0 0.f? That needs to be 0 0.f, doesn't it? Make font bigger for less eye stress. That doesn't help. Jesus wept, what am I doing? Oh, bullet dot. This just needs to be a bunch of bullet dot stuff. I guess I need to type in delta time as well. I need to actually update the grace counter somewhere. Let's tighten up delta time. Where is update bullet? Update position, check if out of bounds. Check for graze. But data oriented sucks. There's so much like copy and pasted code. Now we just drink water. I've been drinking a lot of coffee. This doesn't do anything. Oh, it crashed. Sick. Oh, hang on, this is stupid. What am I even calculating here? I guess I can, uh, this is actually constantly... Is that sound equal to zip? What am I doing? What am I doing, chat? I... It's really, you should have at least consumed eight ounces of water. What is that? In... Oh, like glasses, mugs. Eight ounces of water. Ugh! Ugh! There's no point in having a boolean grazable, right? I guess we could. Just for simplicity. It's a bit of a waste, though. Grazable. True. Why not? Let's simplify things at the expense of computational power. We can just do this, then. If bullet.grazable bullet.grazable equal false. It's like 250 mil, that's not very much. This is actually completely pointless. Oh, I crashed the program, didn't I? Right, 
Raisable not found. Explain yourself. Hmm. Bullet dog raisable, eh? Beep boot, water is not coffee, you woolly boy. What do you think I make my coffee with, brother? Rocks? Crash again, I dare you. I dare you to crash. It's not crashing. Okay, that's good. Hang on, let's delete a bunch of things and let's see if we can follow one bullet. You know, this honestly shouldn't be updating the graze counter. It counts as a graze, apparently. If you just go near it and you're about to be hit. Well, I guess normally you'd get hit and then you'd graze it for a second. You know what would be better with if we had a sound effect for it? How do you do sound effect in SFML? Yeah, I know it grazes your model before it hits the hitbox. I guess I could do a calculation to see if it's between the enemy and the player. But honestly, it's okay. Who cares about grazes that much? It's okay to be a little fudging. Um, let's do this. Uh, SFML add sound. How do I do that? Playing sound effects and music. SF sound and SF music. They're basically the same, it's just different how they work. SF sound is lightweight. Small sounds that can fit in memory and suffer no lag. It doesn't- if the music doesn't, it streams it from the fly- on the fly. Sound data is not stored in SF sound, but in a separate class called sound buffer. It encapsulates the audio data. You can load a sound from a file on disk with its load from file buffer. Playing a music. You should never exceed 256 sounds in a second. Oops. What are thoughts is using as much of your CPU as it wants. It's around 30% of the sound is crackling. Oh heck. I don't you have a small circular hitbox in the middle of your player model? If a bullet hits your player model without hitting your small model, it turns to graze. Yeah. Yeah, Grace is just like, in ca it's like if you nearly got hit by it, but you didn't actually. Okay, let's quickly record a sound effect chat. Hang on a second. Let's go into Audacity. Let's record ourselves a sound effect. What sort of sound effects is a Grace? Like a... Oh, it's like that, yeah. Alright, perfect. Uh, we want to make this as small as possible. Perfect, right? This is how you make sound effects. We want to make this slowly fade down. I know you can't see the audacity thing I'm working on, but trust me, it's not that exciting. Effects fade out. Perfect. Let's make it fade in as well. Effect, fade in. And why don't we change the pitch to something deeper? Hmm. Saint King of Sound Design, do you like this? Hmm. Okay, let's go with that. 
file export as wav is okay. Uh, let's put it in data. I think it's in data. Let's call this graze.wav. Do you want to also make like a shooting sound effect? Let's make a shooting sound effect as well. This is fun. I like that. There's our shooting sound effect. I think it's perfect, right? No, that's like hitting the enemy. That's that's destroying an enemy, I think. That's what that sound effect is. Effect, fade out. I know you can't see any of this, but like, honestly, there is nothing to see. Just listen to the sounds. Effect, um, let's change the pitch. That's a pretty good enemy hit sound. File, export, mp3. No, I want to exp file, export as wav, enemy hit dot wav. Sounds weird, you hate it. Well, sorry about that. Uh, let's make one for shooting a bullet as well. Like, what, what can we use for that? What, what? Uh, ooh. Maybe I can use like this. Oh, do you think I could just use the sound from Pokemon Crystal? Is that illegal? Hang on, like... No, that's like a bomb, isn't it? What can I use? Oh, I've got a GameCube controller here. Maybe I can use something on one of these. Like a... Hmm. It would work. What about like bapping two controllers together? This, what about one of this? I might get annoying. What about like this? Nah. What sort of sound is made when you shoot something in a video game? Like a shkup. Oh, I like that. I, I'm trying to think, chat. What sort of sound? Is it, like, what about like... Hitting an N64 controller. Here's like a DS, right? Here's a Nintendo DS. What if I hit two together? Oh, I like that. Let's try that. Ooh! I like that. I like that a lot. That's more of a gray sound, isn't it? Hang on. What's this then? I really like that. That's a good sound effect, isn't it? I think that can be a graze sound effect. Or like a pickup item or something. Yeah, that's like a pickup. That's a pickup item, if I've ever heard one. Actually, there's a bit of delay. Let's go to that. Effect, fade in. Let's call this... Add some bass to it for firing. Oh yeah, actually, hang on. Can I reuse that as firing if I call it, if I add on a bunch of bass? I wanna, is there no way to preview? Hmm. Oh, that doesn't work. It hates that. It, it doesn't want to work anymore. What have I done? Change the pitch, maybe. This does sound like a hit sound, doesn't it? Hmm. Let's do this. Uh, debug report. Oh, Audacity crashed. Well, that makes that much easier. Shooting a couple of different samples so it's not the exact same one. Oh, I could just, like, do some screwery in SFML to make that sound better, surely. 
Hang on, what, what did I actually manage to save there? Or do I need to re-record that? I can't believe I managed to crash Audacity. Uh, yeah, we've got enemy hit. Honestly, that could be the shooting sound effect. I don't know. Here's grazing. That could be shooting. I mean, honestly, we can reuse some of these things. We can rename them. Okay, I crashed Audacity. Let's re let's re-record that. Uh, discard. We'll we'll re-record it. That's fine. Let's try that. Poof. Poof is cool. Oh, I hate that. That's horrible. How about that? How about that? Oh! Ooh! I don't know what I've got here. Change, Rick, hit your desk and change the pitch. That might work. Actually, hang on. Let's like isolate this section. Effect. Uh, change pitch. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, I have no idea what that is. That's really cool. Oh, I don't know what that is. Oh. It's like spooky. I like that. What about Lou? Spooky. Let's do that, and then it's distorted a bit. Even harmonics. That doesn't do anything. Hard limit. Medium overdrive. Oh, that hurts my ears. Soft clipping. Bap or die. This can be the sound of dying in the game. It can be this bap. Effect. Full stretch. What about wawa? I love a wawa. Oh, that booped and foop. That scared me. I didn't like that. I like that, but you want it over like a like a longer period of time. I don't know if we can do that though. That is pretty juicy. Let's fade out, and then here, that's like fade in, right? And then let's like isolate that into its own file. I kind of want it to be more like another Y at the end, but maybe if I just fade out again. All right, that's perfect. Let's uh, export that as bap wa 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 uh dead dot wav. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, we want to fade out there. We want to fade in here. Oh, I'm gonna cut out that bit. Oh no! I can't believe I'm a professional voice actor. Oh no! And then what you want to do is you want to change the pitch to be more girly. Oh, it's perfect! How have I ever seen something so perfect? Oh my god. It's probably the best thing I've ever heard, right? Fade out. Oh, no. I love it! <laughs> All right, save that. Oh, no. Dot wav. Player goes on you when dead. That's a the nice microphone helps, yeah. Oof. Oof. Here I sound like a normal person. Oof. Here I want to fade out quickly. Oof. And then here I want to apply that pitch again. God, that sounds so bad. Let's change the pitch. 
I don't like this weird Gosh. sound effect. Oof. Kind of spooky. Oof. Effect fade out. I don't know what this is for, but it's like a weird alien sound. Bass and treble. Maybe I can make it more bassy. I guess if I ever need an alien sound effect, we've got we've got one there. We've got a great one. Bass boosted oof. Let's report that ad. Oh, I don't want to bet it as an MP3. Let's have a uh, wav. HQ uh oof alien dot wav. What else do we need to do? Have we actually got one for player hit yet? I don't remember. We have enemy hit graze all new and oh I guess all new is at player getting hit. Alien more like hey here's here's what we've got by the way we've got dead. That's a horrid sound effect. I don't know what that's actually for. We've got that. We got this. We got this. I love that. Let's have another like. Let's have like a few more like slams like this. This is like falling smack into the surface of something. Ivish alien is re really interested long sun. Really? He's very interested. I can imagine him now. Hang on. Effect, fade in. What can I do with this sound effect there? Change pitch. Hmm. He head tilted. Cute. I oh, know. Let's have a. Let's have a. Let's have a. Let's have a heck. Heck. Bap. Effect. Pitch. Alien pitch. It's lewd. <laughs> this is the most fun I think I've ever had in my entire human life. Why am I not just a voice actor? It seems like so much fun to do. Oh, I've lost audacity. It's it's done that thing where it's gone all weird and funky and I don't like it. Okay, I've, I've sort of fixed it. Are you playing TF2K with the viewers this evening? Probably. <laughs> don't like being sworn at by this character. Fade out. And then we can do fade in. And we can do fade in and fade out. And then we can make it right at the start, like this. <laughs> it's such an aggressive BAP as well. File export as WAV. BAP.WAV. Export as wav heck dot wav. All right, we have a few, we have a few wav files here now. Uh, get out of here, Audacity. You're you're welcome to go now. You would pay for BAP. Hell yeah, brother. All right, so now we've got all these sounds. I guess we need to load them in somewhere. We could have a sound thing. I don't know if I can be asked to make that now. I'm finishing in like five minutes. We definitely should do that. Just the same way that we should have a a texture controller. But for now, whatever. Works the same way as sprite and texture works. So if you understand how sprite and textures works, you can do the same with sounds and sound buffers. Oof.
Oh, MP3 is not supported due to licensing issues. Okay, let's have an SF sound. Somewhere, let's do it around here. What files did I just make? All right, let's sort by type, please. Windows. All right, we need sound buffer for BAP. M BAP buffer. One for BAP. We want dead. M E hit. Grays. Heck. Oh new and oof alien and then I guess in uh, create game up here where it's loading the assets so we can just do this shit here actually I think this stuff's copy and pasted straight out the thing isn't it So here I want to do bat buffer .load from file. So I think we can just do that, right, with everything. Alright, that should work. And then when I want to play it, I think I can do it over here. So let's try it in the grazing section. I guess I could have a buffer for each sound, but let's just do it like this for now. Did I call it M Graze Buffer? What did I call it? M Gray's buffer. Do you reckon that'll work? You fixed your joystick drift by cleaning it properly. Oh, I forgot to buy those off Amazon. I was buying um, a repair kit. I think I forgot to actually finish that. Oh, do I need to include the sound buffer? What do I include? Oh, I include SFML audio. Oh, whoops. Well, oh, hang on, is that in the wrong place? No, that works apparently. Did it immediately crash? Why? Let's try and load it, maybe. Oh, hang on. Oh, wait, hang on. No, that should be right, yeah? In debug build woolen.exe, isn't it? Build? Oh, it's not. It's uh, slash build slash bin slash debug slash bullen dot exe Oh, 
Oh, does debug have to have a capital, maybe? Is that not right? It crashes immediately after being loaded. Hang on, maybe I'm just giving it the wrong file. What do I normally load in? Backplate image file. What is backplate image file? Oh, the music ended. Oh, whoops. Why is player here? Oh, it's data slash. My bad. I guess that makes sense. Maybe that'll work. It still crashes. Could you perhaps explain why? Failed to wa waifu texture bap buffer. Couldn't open stream. Oh, well that actually makes sense. Um, sound. This music's good, yeah. Data bin data. Oh, it's M underscore. It's not actually called M underscore. God, M underscore sucks, don't it? The company's VPN is poo. You give up on work today. Do you have to work through a VPN to get into work? So you can get onto the internet. Hey, it worked, but it crashed again. Couldn't open stream. Why not? Data slash app buffer. Oh, it's not called buffer. But I'm being stupid, aren't I? There's no buffer at the end. It's just the sound effect. Hey! Yo! Grazing sound effects. Alright, sick. So that means we could even have shooting sound effects and stuff if we wanted to. Yo, isn't that neat? We should definitely have different sound buffers for each sound. Isn't that cool, chat? These are beautiful noises. I could play O'Neill if you want. Let's play O'Neill if I get hit. Um... Bullet dot destroy. Oh, here we go. Sound dot set buffer. M. Oh, new buffer. Player dot M player dot reset. How do I clear an optional? Maybe it's that. Maybe that'll break everything. We haven't tried deleting the player yet, have we? Oh, reset. Very neat. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, it's so perfect. 
So you're like, you're dodging, you're going... <laughs> oh, it's so perfect. It's so perfect. Hang on, um, can I do reset? I don't exactly what remember what's tied to reset, but... Reset doesn't actually really do much. Okay. I guess I'm... Chris. I'm finishing. Have you heard the oh no? The dying sound is a high-pitched oh no! Exactly! Oh, I could have gotten you to do it. Can you hear that, Chris? <laughs> It's so good, isn't it? Quitabix? No, I haven't finished. I had like one slice earlier. I want to try and graze a bit. Yeah, look, you can totally graze. And then it crashes sometimes. I'm not entirely sure why it crashes, but it just does. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna end the stream for now anyway, because it's four, and we end an hour earlier now. There you go, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching the stream for now, chat. I'll be back in three hours. I get so much time off. We can do so many activities. Do you want to eat pizza and watch Friends together? Hell yeah, brother. Anyway, thanks for watching the stream today, chat. I hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll be back in three hours with some Team Fortress 2 for three hours. Isn't that exciting? We're trying to experiment this week with shorter work hours because it's stressful working 56 hours. It's hard. It's tough. As I'm sure some of you who are working 100 hours will know. We require pig zoom. Sure. But anyway, yeah. So I'll see you all in three hours. Thank you all for watching today. Have a wonderful afternoon. Um, do you want me to host someone? I've been doing that a lot lately. This is what you do as like a nice Twitch streamer. You finish your stream and then you go wham bam. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You see if Crotux live. Because I like hosting Krotuk. He's friendly. I can trust him. Oh, actually, um, Unicorn Owl's painting. Yeah. Unless I want to host Mewtwo King playing Deprived. No. Let's, uh, let's host Unicorn Owl. Go say hey to... I know there's a... I'm sure there's a raid option. I just do slash raid. She's doing nice painting of a horse. Probably. Um, so I'm going to go raid her. See you all in three hours. Have a nice break, chat. Go say hello to... Kind came? I don't I don't know. It's this 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 stream here. Bye 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 bye.